Let's wait a few more minutes. Let's admit more people. So we're gonna start in about two minutes, just to give people an opportunity to join. So if you are just joining us, please um, mute your microphone. <clears throat> so welcome everyone again we already have um, about 72 people. How do I even increase the volume? So I'm still working on admitting more people. I think we'll soon get to the max and um, others will have to stream on YouTube. <clears throat> All right, without wasting time, let's just get started. And this meeting will be recorded. So if you missed anything, maybe due to network issues. Yeah. We should be able to record and you can revisit uh, later. So if you are just joining, please mute yourself, please. All right, so um, about the deal, Joe, I, about, um, Let's say eight years ago, I was uh, just like you, most of you trying to get into grad school. So I attended Ikiti State University in Nigeria and um, came here for my master's and PhD. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you, you, might, you might notice that my voice is uh, not the best because I'm not feeling too great this morment. Uh, but we'll try to make this meeting work. I didn't want to cancel it. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I had my master's and PhD at Oklahoma State University. And, um, you know, back in 2013, when I was looking for opportunities, I there was really not many, not much information out there. So when I applied, I didn't really care about funding. One, because I'm just too frustrated to stay in Nigeria. Then secondly, because I didn't really know how to get it. But luckily when I got here in January 2014, I eventually got funded. So I eventually knew what I should have done while I was you know, back in Nigeria, but I did not do it because I just didn't have the information. So when I finished my PhD, I decided, okay, I'm gonna start putting out this information for you guys, so you guys can know what you should do before you even apply. 
to give yourself the best chance to not just get admitted, but also get funded. Hopefully, we all love to come with funding. So I've been doing that and um, I've been, I mean, we've had very positive results with those who use our platform and even for any other platform. Um, so the best thing is to come with funding, but if you can't come with funding, it's still okay to use other means that we can talk about later. Um, so since I finished the 2019, I started uh, Best Man Academy to basically do two things. First, to, like I said earlier, turn out information about uh, the grad school process and um, So Charlie said he cannot hear anything. Is this true for everyone? No, sir, we can't hear you, sir. All right, okay. No, we can't hear you. Maybe you should mute himself, yeah. Thank you, we can't hear you. Yeah, set your microphone. I think you need to set your microphone somehow. Okay. All right, so, um, so I started this fun academy to do two things. First is to, of course, turn out information about the graduate admission and funding process in the United States to make it easier for you to you know, come here on, on a soft, let's say soft landing, right? And secondly, to also turn out information about how you can self-sponsor yourself for permanent residency in the US, which is what I did. And a couple of, a lot of other people also do that as well. But most people cannot do it after they graduate because they don't, maybe they don't have the information. And um, even now that they have the information, they've not prepared well for it because there are a lot of requirements for that. So and I'm talking about the national interest river here. So those are the two things I basically do with uh, this platform. So if you have any friends that are already in the US, tell them to learn about the NIW because they will have to prepare for it to get qualified for it, um, either during their grad school uh, courses or after. Okay, it's not just something we stumble upon and qualify for. And um, of course, we have resources on that. Most of our grad school stuff are free because I realize you guys don't have the money to pay for stuff. But when it gets to the national interest stuff, because we work with lawyers, uh, they, they, they want to you know, afford their pay. Okay? So that's um, basically what we do with the platform. So without um, wasting time, I'm going to introduce um, the speaker for today, Islamia. So Islamia Fadilade was one of, uh, so again, every year I have this small group of people that I just kind of take as my mentees. Of course, I would like to have everybody, but it won't be effective if I have everybody. And I know a lot of other scholars have them do the same. So I just kind of work with this small group of people um, to uh, mentor them through the process. So she was one of um, these people last year. And believe it or not, uh, believe it or not, she is not the only one with an h &D last year. So the two, I think we had two people with uh, the h &D and uh, both of them got admitted. So whatever she is going to talk about today has been tried uh, and tested and um, we know that it works, okay? So uh, what we are gonna do is, Islamiyat will just, will give her about um, 20 minutes to talk about her experience through the process. Then we will open the floor for questions, okay? That's fair. All right, um, Islamiyat, let's um, have you welcome. Thank you for, I know it's a busy time in your life right now as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting used to the environment of Florida. Yeah. It's a warm area anyway. You don't have to go to 
my team is here right now. It's so humid. Like you can see the heat through your skin, but it's very fine. Good. So uh, welcome, and um, yeah, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, your background, and just talk to us through the process. All and right. Start taking questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Babadidiogu, my dear mentor. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, um, I could remember last year, this time last year, I was looking for someone to mentor me after I've searched and searched, because um, I've been on this journey since um, 2019. So before I dive into that, let me just quickly introduce myself once again. I am Ojala Deslamiya Tadenike, and I hailed from um, Ibeche in Ogo State, Ibeche, in Ogo State, where we have the largest cement factory, Dangote cement factory. So um, I had my primary at Vitriland Private School in Lagos State, Hagege, Lagos State. Then I proceeded to Yewa Secondary School, my and my secondary education. I actually wanted to study medicine all along, but somehow, somehow, after writing jam for three years, I didn't get to my um, dream. I, I didn't get to study my dream course. I've always been close to the code of math, but I didn't think I knew then maybe I would have opted to something um, a course with lower um, UTM scores or post-UTM scores, but I sure wanted to study medicine. After three years, I decided to, I couldn't wait any longer. So I decided to proceed for um, my national diploma in science laboratory technology at um, Ogo State Institute of Technology, where I graduated with the extension. And after um, the compulsory one year industrial training, I also, I proceeded to, um, Federal Polytechnic Ilaru. I wanted to study microbiology at Federal Polytechnic Ilaru again. Like, I feel, I feel studying microbiology is related to medicine. So perhaps after my um, HND, I can say obtain direct entry form to, for medicine. And error in application from my cousin made me get into chemistry. I told my cousin because it was my cousin that registered for me. So I told him to pick microbiology. I don't know why <laughs> he picked chemistry. So when the merit list for chemistry came out, I saw my name on the merit list. And there was one thing happened then, like I just embraced it. I embraced the change. I didn't allow it to affect me. So I get, I got oh, into, you know, you know, I, know. I got into Polytechnic Ilaru and I, as a new student in a new environment, I put in all this effort. So I I was able to in 2018 I graduated as the overall best graduate student at Federal Polytechnic Ilaru. And on my convocation day, I was opportune to meet the chief of staff who is currently the um senator representing Ugu West. So he told me to keep in touch and I kept in touch. And immediately after my, because I was retained, I was offered automatic employment at Federal Polytechnic Ilaru. So after my NYS, I served in my alma mater. After my NYS, I already got about three job offers. One has Federal Polytechnic Ilaru, one with the senator, and the other has one um, big pharmaceutical industry in some water. So I decided to, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to be in academic area again. So I decided to hop for the, the senatorial, um, secretarial job with the senator, where I moved to National Assembly in Abuja. So I worked for a while, but my burning passion to be in academia and to also further my education abroad. So I left National Assembly and to return to Federal Polytechnic in Laro to accept my offer of employment. So when I got to Federal Polytechnic, I was embraced. I was, I was welcomed. This is my hammer mat, and I had my national youth service there. So in 2019, yes. No, I moved to Federal Polytechnic in 2020, and the pandemic came. I couldn't resume, so I resumed around June 1st, 2020. And that was the period I even lost my dad because we, we've been on it for a while. We've been on me forging my education since 2019. 
So I started on joining. Then I am in Federal Polytechnic Ilaru. I work as an instructor, assist um, um, the senior lecturers with um, classes, practicals, and the likes. And I also mentor a lot of people, even outside. Um, I mentor students and outside the classroom as well. So, and I had my West evaluation. That was the first thing I, I did then. I just knew that, let me just do West evaluation. I don't even know what I would do with it. So I had my West evaluation, but my MD school didn't send my verification. Um, they, they didn't verify my certificate until, 20, 2021, last year, since 2019. I kept on pushing till the rector, in, in fact, had to um, come through for me then. So I've been on it. I applied to universities in Canada for transfer, um, transfer, undergraduate transfer admission. University of Barbata gave me admission. That means I will be starting from 300 level in the university. And I also applied to some schools in the UK. I was offered, a, I was offered a, um, admission, but we know scholarship or funding. And then my dad was so sick, so we could not afford to do that. We could not afford to, we could not afford to send me out of the country. So I, I kept on pushing, doing my um, duties as an instructor in Federal Polytechnic in Laru, impacting lives with my whole needle effort. And so in 2021, my friends, something just popped up in my heart that day that I should try to get my friends transcript because I have friends that studied chemistry, so I told them to send their transcripts to me, but three of them, they, they've been so wonderful. So I, I, I compared my transcripts with their. I was like, ah, these are the courses I did. I told them to send me a curriculum. And um, at some point, I even got, got the um, chemistry university curriculum online. So I was trying to compare and contrast. I noticed there was no difference at all. In fact, I did some courses they didn't even do. And something struck my mind that, Samia, if these people can get scholarship with their bachelor's degree, they got PhD scholarship, then you should be able to get your uh, uh, scholarship with your HND. But I was at a crossroad. And what, was, what happened there was that I, I needed someone to guide me. I've always followed a lot of folks on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. I messaged a lot of friends. I I, I kept on pushing until one day I saw Dr. Mobadi Girodo's um, tweet, tweet. So it linked me to his um, Instagram page. When I got there, I was just scrolling through his page and I saw um, to call for 2022, the National Academy Fellowship, Mentorship, whatever. So I just, and I was happy that, oh, thank God, I finally met my mentor. Strolling down, I, I saw that the deadline has passed. That, that day I was so devastated because I was like, how do I want to go about this? Something just broke my mind that message Dr. Babaji Diojo. Now don't message him the usual way like, hello, hello sir, how are you doing? Uh, I want to join your mentorship program. I noticed um, the data has passed, you know, the normal. I just, in the middle of the night, I just stood up and drafted something special. In fact, I it was in, in a PDF format and I sent it to him on Instagram. I don't know if he still has the <laughs> right up, but I definitely have the right up with it. I just sent it to him like it was like um, a write up. He wouldn't have even imagined that I wanted to request for something. I knew that that's, that particular PDF um, document I sent to him that they changed a lot of things. When he saw it, he responded and told me that the application has closed. Although the application has closed, but he will be willing to you know, absorb me into this. So I applied. And fortunately for me, I got into the fellow um, mentorship, is a free mentorship program, and we started everything. You know, he reviewed my SOP. In fact, it wasn't easy. I drafted my SOP for over two months, fast searching for schools that have my research interests, a lot of things I did during this period. And thank God I had someone that held my hand through the process. So it's because it's, it's really a big deal. There's, um, it's one thing to be passionate about something and it's another thing to have someone to hold your hands in the journey. And this would definitely hit your heart. Yes, along the line. So a lot of things happened along the line, but I'm so, so glad that at the end, I applied to 
Doctor, I think I applied to 17 schools. Yes, I applied to 17 schools, but the completed applications were 12. The remaining five were not completed. So I had, in the beginning, I had about 30. That was what doctor told me to do. He told us to do that. We should have about 30 or 40. Just have the list. At the end of the day, when you, when you keep going, you will have to remove some schools out of the, the list. So I, I, I applied to, I submitted application to 17 schools, but my completed application to 12 schools. So um, literally, I applied to 12 schools. And I wrote some exams. I wrote so full. I wrote IELTS in 2019. So in 2021, my IELTS got expired. So I had to take TOEFL. So I wrote TOEFL. I didn't write the GRE. And, be, and that was because I just felt I was so busy. I was so busy, you know, combining work, combining school. I have a business I run. Um, I, I, I formulate air care products, IB BAM formulation. I have um, extracurricular activities I do. I'm a JCI member. And then I was the executive vice president for JCI also. So I was, I was so, so engaged, but I still kept pushing like this. I have to get this done. I have to achieve my aim. All these ones are just um, um, like uh, unleashing my potentials in other ways, but my focus is to get to further my education abroad. So it was so, so stressful for me. I couldn't write the GRE, but I felt okay. If I didn't submit the GRE, then there are other um, strong, um, materials I could put in for my application. I have publications related to my um, research interest. I have publication. I have a very, very strong CGPA. My worst evaluation CGPA is 3.95 on a scale of 4.0. So my TOEFL results were so awesome and great. So I felt, okay, let me apply to schools. And the remaining schools, because I, I, I inquired why I didn't get into about three of them. And that was because I didn't write GRE. I would have perhaps had about 10 offers, but I didn't write GRE. So it affected other, um, my, 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 my admittance into other schools. So the first of all of admission came in, in um, December 23rd when I was planning to travel to visit my mom for Christmas and New Year um, during the festive period in 2021. I was, I was even sick there. Yes, I was because the stress was just too much for me. It was too much for me. And I could only pray for to God to crown the effort with success, which he has did, he has done. And I'm so happy that I'm here today sharing the story with everybody. So University from University of Kansas, I got the first of our admit of our admission. So I was already I was already sure that I was going to the United States of America. And after that, after the admission, other admissions started came in, coming in. Then around April, May, even after I have gotten my visa approved, some schools started sending me, um, started sending me rejection letters. So I was even happy that, thank God, I have gotten my visa. So from the beginning to the end, till my, till I, I, I reached the um, United States of America, it was, the journey was rough, it wasn't smooth, but it was a bit easier because I had someone holding my hand, guiding me. And I have a lot of friends. I was surrounded by a lot of people. See, when I started, I met a lot of people. Even before meeting Dr. Mabaji Diojo, people that are very, very close to me, I told them I wanted to apply for, I didn't even tell them I wanted to apply for PhD. I wanted to apply for master's degree. In my head, they were like, I should not do it. I should not do that, I should not do this. Uh, well, well, a lot of things. They were just saying a lot of things then. See, what I did there was anybody I tell this and tell me not to apply, I cut them out of my life. They are negative vibes. I don't want to talk to you about it again. So I stopped feeding them with the progress of my application. When I finally met Dr. Mabadi Diojo and he said, what, what do I want to apply? I said, PhD. When I told my friend that was applying for master's, she said, I want to apply for PhD. I said, yes. I said, ah, why no master? I said, no, I know I'm going to get into um for the, I, I i know i'm going to be admitted for the phd program they were all amazed so all the people that i felt this was a negative vibes i cut them off out of my life i only want like, positive vibes around me i only want positivity around me I, will, I want people that will push me to achieve my dream so i cut them out of my life not until a few minutes i started telling them that oh yeah i'm traveling i got this this one i think i won't get i got it 
and that is how I've always lived my life. And I believe you would, you 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 start some lessons from that. So when you set my mind, your mind at something, just push it. And sometimes when you plan something, it's not going to work. And that's what that was what I learned when I was pursuing medicine. And that was what I also learned when I wanted to study microbiology. I didn't have any embraced chemistry. In my, this story might not have been told today. So I embraced what God has planned for me. That doesn't mean we should not, we should not keep trying. So when you try, 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 and God tells you that this is not the way, take this. You know, when we plan, God has another, might have another plan for us. So any plan God has, uh, 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 Giving us or as laid down for us, we don't have to down to follow it because that, that plan will definitely come to. We'll be happy at the end. It will lead to an happy ending. A happy ending. So a lot of blessings has been learned, and I'm really, really, really excited. I'm grateful to God that uh, this story has inspired a lot of people. I got a lot of DMs, I got a lot of calls, <laughs> even people that didn't know that would be able to get it. I, 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 they reached out to me, congratulated me. They, they were even proud of me. Like, you know, those are the people that will even be spreading your ministry. So don't be discouraged. I'm glad a lot of people have been inspired. But it requires hard work, yes, like extreme hard work. I remember when I was drafting my SOP within those two months, I was, I had gastroenteritis and it was, in, it was even during, um, during, um, um, fasting period. I was fasting, I was suffering from ga gastroenteritis, and I was writing my health. I was the only one inside because we were on strike then. Our soup was on strike. So I was the only one doing everything. It wasn't easy, yes, I must say, but now the success story is. I'll give you five more minutes. How many minutes, sir? I'll give you five more minutes. Oh, you <laughs> So we can take. So I'm running up already. So, so, so if that's not what I have to say, I think I've been able to capture a lot of things. Yeah. So, and now I'm in the US and I'm excited about this next phase and the building love and the special grace of God. I will put in all my effort to ensure that because I, there's one thing when you realize that you are not alone, when you are going, Remember, when you want to give up, yes, when you want to give up, remember those that are attached to you, those that will, inspire by, that will be inspired by your story. So I'm not giving up yet. I'm still, I'll still be continue putting in the effort so that at the end of the day, at every stage I get to, people will still be continue to get inspired by my story. So we'll all get there, yes. For you to be here, it shows you are dedicated and committed. Just for, less for you to put in the work and you get the results. Thank you, Doctor. Good. Um, so I I will start with, with my own questions, okay? Even though I know the answers to this, but I want them to hear it from you. Um, so you said you you applied to I think 17 schools, right? Uh, Yes, how were how were you able to afford all this? <laughs> so, so it was a you joke and you're aware of you're aware of it. I didn't pay for any application. I only paid for I only paid thirty dollars to Florida State University. I applied to application through Wayback, and I was I requested for it and I, it was granted. So I did pay for wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. I think I think I lost the audio a little bit. You said you applied for what? Application fee waivers. Okay, good. Yeah. So I only paid to Florida State University, this school I'm currently in, which is which was thirty dollars. Florida says we not waive the application fee. They will tell you just thirty dollars. I remember that in the like they were like just thirty dollars. We should be able to afford it. But all the schools I requested and I was given. Said there's this um there's this um, saying that it told us then ask and it shall be given unto you. So I asked. In fact, University of Massachusetts in Hamrest, when I requested for application fee waiver, I had to write essays before they gave me the application fee waiver. I had to write essays. So, right. so, so, so I want I want people to understand that because uh, sometimes when you say uh, I have Light to 20 schools, they might, they might think you have the money to do that. No, 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 I don't. Uh, in anything, you should, you should always ask. 
Yeah. But personally, for me, I prefer that um, people ask for waivers for application fees. Uh, but I, I always suggest that you know be careful about um, waivers for either GRE or TOEFL yeah. because you know at the end of the day it might be at your disadvantage in getting admitted if a lot of other people submit those exams. So you need to. But if you have at least one of the exams, let's say for I think for Isamia's um, case. She just, you know, she didn't take the GRE, so she thought you have to forego all the schools that require GRE, then focus on the ones that do not require GRE. And because of that, you have to apply to a lot of schools. That doesn't mean you have to pay for all their fees. You can ask for fee waiver, but you have to ask professionally. We can talk about how to ask. Yes, sir. So some questions are popping up in the chat box right, right. now. So I'm, I'm just going to start reading out the questions. I, I don't want to be the only one asking questions. So okay. Let's start with, um, okay. So how, how did you, how did you handle the issue of Hello? obtaining references? So I can... You, um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah, how did you handle the issue of uh, obtaining references to 17 schools? <laughs> okay, you know, see, um, when I, I wrote something in um, the first post I posted on um, LinkedIn that I had the right people around me, I went to my recommenders, discussed with them about, no, I, I had just four recommenders in this game. So I met about six of them. And I knew those that would be willing to write my reference for me, even if I call them in the middle of the night or they an email from the schools that I applied to in the middle of the night that oh we need you to write a recommendation letter for Islamia. So I actually got to know them and these were the three people I I I submitted their email addresses while applying. So basically my recommenders where mothers and they work where I, they work where I work. They are my senior colleagues. They, you know, I work in my I work in my hama mater. So they were the one that recommended me for admission. And anytime I called them, they were always willing to respond to me. So you have to, you know, you, you discuss your 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 dreams with these people. And you pray that they, they would key into it. Hello? Good. Okay. So um, before I read another one, let me give Michael the opportunity to ask a question. Michael, please unmute yourself. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead, Michael, please. Okay. Um, so Hello, wow. sir. Sorry. If Michael is not online, please, can I say something? Is that Julius? Yes, sir. All right. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, let me use this opportunity to to congratulate our sister. Well done, ma'am. I'm from Ogun State, Ayeturo, precisely. So uh -huh. my question now, um, <laughs> how were you able to take um, the transcript to, um, to this site now? That is for, for evaluation, the West evaluation stuff now. How did you... Uh, how were you able to give them your transcript? Because when I visit the site, I saw something like it must be the school that must send the tra uh, transcript to them. And if you are bringing it, the envelope must not be broken or something, something. So how far how were you able to um, um, take your transcript to them? West, right? Or West, yes, right? Yes, West. West. For West, you cannot use um student copy for West. Your school has to send it to them. That's 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 their 
they are posting your evaluated results. Your school has to send it to them. So after sending the transcript to them, when they receive it, it will be updated on your portal. And after they evaluate it, they would ask for verification again. So you would have to reach out, they will reach out to the school, your school, to verify what they have sent earlier to them. So you can only send them for the school that has to directly to work. So my school sent, the, the two schools I attended, they sent my um, transcripts to, to West directly. And during evaluation and um, verification, they sent it directly. So I get updates on my portal whenever the, um, the school, they receive correspondence from the school or the exchange correspondence from my school. So I, I, think, I think a clarification that needs to be made is you only need to send one copy, right, to Wes. Yeah. And, um, and Wes will send, for example, in our case, you just keep asking Wes to send the, the evaluated uh, results to all those schools. No, right? no, 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 no. You don't need to send, tell Wes to send it to schools. Wes, Wes will send you a copy of the evaluated report. Yes. So you use that copy for all the 17 schools. That's what I'm saying. This is what I did. When I'm asked to submit my transcript, I submit my original student um, copy transcript, unofficial transcript. Then on that, on that supporting document, every application has on um, supporting document. On that supporting document, I attach my West evaluation report. Okay, so you have both copies, both the original. Yes, I have, yes, I have all the copies with me. Hello, sir. Okay, hello. Okay, uh, okay. Does it mean if you already have the West evaluation um, certificate or results, you don't need to show them your HND or ND result anymore, just the That's evaluation reports? That's what I just said. You have to upload your ND and HND transcripts. Then the West evaluation results, what I did was to attach it as a doc supporting document whenever I'm has supporting document. Sometimes some school will not even ask you okay. for TOEFL. They won't ask you for TOEFL or English um, language proficiency um, report, but I do attach it. Since I have it, I didn't mean I had GRE too, I would be attaching it on that supporting document. Do you get that now, sir? Okay, I get it. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, all right, is, is Hello, Michael, Michael. Michael out? Hello, doctor. Doctor? Yes. Is this true? Because I can see that we yes, are yes. having more than 100 people. Yeah, we are streaming it, and I'll go to the questions there soon. But let's, let's attend to some. Um, it's so that's all right. Yeah. So, Michael, are you awake now? Yes, I, I'm there. Good evening. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, um, thank you. I also came from Lairo at the same time. So we're done, uh, Islamia. So my question is, I also have HND and I I have um, TOEFL actually, but to to apply for for US, that's my issue to get HM even for, just for a master because I have proper credit in um, later, later engineering um, twenty seventeen. So how was the for how do I do it? Because I am really didn't have an issue with you know being using my master if just a master in any of the university and I mean um, investing in USA and also scholarship at the same time. That's just my question. That just it. I I, I encourage your 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 motive so far. So I don't know if if um. Engineer can also help me out as in the moderator as well. Hey, well, I did you see my last post on LinkedIn? Because I'm sure now that Dr. Ojo has, has um, admitted his 2023 fellow. So that was why I posted um, the next post. The, I think the, the second post I had this week, yes. I shared um, some tips on how you could navigate the, the process. So I would encourage you to check it out. And then on um, Bestman Academy YouTube channel, there are a lot of um, tips you can get from that. You can check out Bestman Academy 
YouTube channel, how to write SOP, um, how to write, how to search for schools, a lot of things are there. And there are some folks you can also follow on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. So I, I just want to mention that you don't have to be here to get addicted, okay? You don't have to be mentored by people <laughs> that there are a lot of people that don't have anybody. Like she said, it maybe might be a little easier, but I mean, at the end of the day, nobody can make you the candidate for, the, for admission if you haven't done the work to some extent by having a certain level of a GPA, or if you have to write exams, you still have to pass the exams, right? If you have to write them. So apart from that, you know, nobody can really make you uh, good candidate for admission if you can't help yourself up to that next step. So, um, like I said, uh, you can, I always, you know, sometimes I, I post on social media, the best people you can have mentor you are people that are maybe in the schools that you are open to you know, get admitted to or in the country. For example, if someone is in the UK, then that person will be the, your best plug for UK admission, right? Because they have the knowledge uh, of not, not just admission, but at least settling down in the environment. Those are important things as well. So um, as regards this, if you haven't seen her post, I think uh, what I would just say is the only difference between HND and BSc when it comes to grad school in the US, I think, is uh, that West evaluation, okay? For most schools will not, may not understand you know, how to interpret the ND, OND, and HND. But if you do it for your West evaluation, then they can really understand how that compares to US standard. Then every other thing after that is the same. You, know, you have to write exams, SOP, but the only difference is I believe you would have to do that with evaluation so that they can understand how your undergraduates uh, uh, compares to US standards. Believe it or not, some, some schools will even ask BSc people, we are bachelors, people that have, have a bachelor's to still do a West evaluation. Yeah, because like Wayne State University, you still do evaluation. Uh, <laughs> bachelor's. Still do bachelor's, bachelor's. Because somehow they can't interpret, they can't understand our transcripts. For example, in Nigeria, I know in most schools, 70 is an A, right? Uh, you should get 70 and, and above. But here, 70 is a C. So when, when, you, when you have your transcript and, and you have a, a C, a, a, an A with 70, they kind of get confused on, you know? how to interpret that. But if you do it that West evaluation, I don't know how West does it, but somehow they are able to uh, interpret your transcript to US standard. So if you have a good result from Nigeria, it's, it will still be a very good result uh, in US standards. So that's it. Apart from that West evaluation, everything is the same. So if um, I can share some resources here, and I have like a free course that you guys can go through. I have everything on SOP and every other thing. So let, let's. Um... Okay. Thank you. Maybe you share that um, link with us so that I can go through it. I want you to be with this. Thank you. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. So HMD Global, I don't know if that's a name. Not yet, please. Go ahead, then I'll read a question from the chat. Um, so, question from the chat. How do you get your waste evaluation done? Oh, I currently have my transcripts with me. Just go to waste.org. Waste.org, you, 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 you'll be guided there. Yeah, just typewest.org. Every the requirements are there for you. Just right. for the persons that still okay, you are in the chat. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, for can you please go ahead before I read another question? Yeah. Okay, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. 
Okay, my name is Samuel. Sorry if you're hearing any background noise. It's raining here in Portacourt currently, and it's heavy. Okay, sir, I have a lot of questions, but let me start with one. I attended Federal Polytechnic Nekede in Oweri. I came out distinction and was one of the one of the best in my class. So that was and there I proceeded to I proceeded for direct entry to Michael Opera Federal University in Umudike Umahia. That is Adia State Capital. That was in 2016 after my compulsory one year IT that I did in VI Lagos. So I got admitted the same year I finished my one year IT to Umudike. That is I automatically when you when you come out with upper credit or distinction that with ND, you start from 200 level. So I started 200 level, did 200 level, then 300 level during my IT. But I've been the one like shouldering my academics, let's say 70%, given the background where I'm coming from. So most times I'm the first child and I don't actually bother my, my parents that much because I have siblings they need to settle to when it comes to school bills and all that. So that's, that's by the way. So after that, I proceeded to Port Harcourt for my industrial training, the six months one. So during that, I got a job actually, a part, let's say a contract job with, with, with Sky Bank. That was then Sky Bank, not Polaris Bank. I'm still with them though. So I had to work and school because when I wanted to finish my six months IT, some folks told me, ah, guy, you need to come back to school, you need to do this. But a person where we actually know where they pay now. I don't know if you understand. So I told them, no, I'm keeping this job while I finish my school. So I was on the job. I got the job May. So May 2018, getting to December 1st, my dad died. As if God had a plan for me. I don't know. So my old man died. And after that, when I finished, actually I finished with, but my dream would have been to finish with the first class also. But I finished with 4.46 because I was traumatized. When, when I lost my dad at that period, it was near to my exam. I would take exam for, two, for a month plus. I had to take leave from work too. So I was just like traumatized, coupled with my nitrogen. I close to work, come back with the day break. And I couldn't just gather myself. So I couldn't make it, make, it, make it to the first class level. So doctor, my question now is, how do I combine, well, I'm actually seeking, for my current state now, I'm actually seeking a fully funded scholarship, be it to master's or, or PhD direct. So I don't know, how do I combine? I've learned about the West evaluation and I've also tried to get, tried in, in getting my transcript from school. Nekede would tell me, they can't give you student copy directly. And what they will do to you is that if you're sending to any institution, then they will prepare a student copy for you. So currently, I don't have any institution where I'm sending my transcript to, and I've not started so many applications. I started following you like two weeks ago, both on your YouTube and, and on LinkedIn. So I've been keeping tabs with your updates. So my question now is, how do I combine this, my ND certificate or qualification and that of my BSc so that I can proceed further? For masters or direct PhD, anyone? So you have an MD and BSc. They're both in computer science, yeah. Okay, so you would you you can so what I would suggest is um, the MD might just serve as a as a diploma. We have diplomas here as well. So if you if you still if you can do a evaluation of this, that would be great. Okay. okay, so if you can yeah. send both from Western and National, you can still use both for uh, admission. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, okay. I don't think that's a problem. Okay, as long as you have a good result, and what you are going for is somewhat related to your, your undergrad. Okay, so can I, I, I have the last? I think, I think you will. You will uh, your 4.46 is still, still going to be a good, it's 4.46 out of 5, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, I think that, that, that will still be, be a good uh, result if West is an Okay. Okay, sir. I have one more question. You should question. know that there are a lot of schools that would not need West evaluation if you just want to use your bachelor's. Okay, okay, sir. Right, so you, okay. you don't have to. That means if you want to okay. the only then maybe that school might not understand what ND is. You might still add it, but it might not help you that much. But uh, you can still use the bachelor's. 
Um, because most of the schools have gone through their requirement, they will tell you a two two or a two one from a postgraduate from an undergraduate course you did. You understand for you to continue on the master level, and they will tell you that that the undergraduate should be like a minimum of like they will tell you a minimum of four years duration course. You understand? Like now, my BSc my BSc is not four years and it's three years. If I'm to accumulate the years of study in uh, like accumulated like year year two to four hundred level is three years so those are my questions and worries yeah, so so in that case it's like yes it's not up to four years yeah i think what can really help you is to is to maybe do the worst evaluation because they might be able to maybe help you explain how you know that NBI, bsc after okay. the whole uh, four years yeah yeah so i think that that's what might help you there. But you know, we, okay. we, we will never know until you try, you know, but I think your best bet is to evaluate results, both results. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so last one, please. I want to ask Ms. Islamiyat, sorry if I don't pronounce the name very well. Those recommendation letters you sent to the 17 schools you applied to, you know, most times they, you, you're, when you're sending the recommendation letter, it should be, I think it should be addressed to the schools in particular. So my question is, was it addressed to the schools in particular or those your recommenders wrote to whom it may concern? You know, most times they say to whom it may concern. It's not formal. It was specific, not to whom it may concern. Yeah, it was the respect. University of Massachusetts Amherst, the admissions committee, Utah State University, the admissions committee is different. And okay. the content too. We're so so different. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that will be all for now. Let me give him some other. Thanks. All right. Okay. I think I'll have to show Larry's. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Babaji Dirujo. And um, congratulations to Islam. Yes, I'm really proud of you. Uh, first, I would like to ask you that um, you said you applied to 17 schools. Um, I want to ask, did you um, get um, the confirmation from every professor? You know, most of the school will ask you that before you apply to the school, you must have had like discussion with the professor and must have given you a go ahead to apply. Did you do that to all the 17 professors and did you have a confirmation or you just applied anyway? And then number the two question I want to ask you is, um, you said you use the application waiver fee, that you were giving application waiver. All the schools that you got the waiver fee for, how many of them did you get admissions to? I want to know if it affected your chances of getting admission or not. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, the first question was on, um, please remind me again. Hello, did you get my question? Yeah, the first question was on what the game is. She said, the, um, did you, you know, usually we recommend that you reach out to professors. Okay, okay yeah. yeah. Before you apply. So did you get maybe a positive response from all 17 schools? Well, I did didn't, you? I didn't do, I didn't send, okay, I only sent code emails to three professors from different schools, which were um, Florida State University, Michigan State University. In fact, I already secured a professor at um, Michigan State University. But Michigan State University admits me because of GRE, okay? So you have to go through the requirements very, very well. I went through the requirement very well. Not all schools need you to get a professor before you could apply or before you could get admitted into the school. But, in the case of one of the schools I applied to, University of um, Colorado, Buta, um, they didn't have me because it was boldly written on their website that you have to secure a professor in the Department of Chemistry before you could, you could apply or get into the um, department, get admission, but I still went ahead to apply. So some schools will tell you that you need to get a professor. You need to get someone to accept you before you, they could admit you. In fact, those professors most times would push your admission. They will help 
through the um, um, application process and would also recommend you for admission. You may not be in the admissions committee. Why most schools I applied to, they didn't require that I get a professor before I applied. So I didn't. And I also went for that to make inquiries from graduate coordinators. I inquired from them to know whether I should secure a professor or not. So my, the responses, most of the responses I got, I got were, was that I should know, I don't need to do that, that the school, um, the admissions committee would evaluate your result, your um, application material holistically. So you don't need to get professors before doing that, before getting admission. So that's it. And I should say it's, it's always different from, you know, depending on your field. Yes. I think chemistry is uh, one of the fields that, I mean, they are pretty much well-funded, at least yes. in terms of, uh, you can easily get a TA if you are good. Okay, uh, so, so it's like the department that funds that, so you really don't need to get a professor. But in 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 a situation where you know a department uh, funds their PhD student mainly through research, then it may be important that you request one or two professors in the department yeah. before getting admitted. In any case, like you said, you, like you need to uh, read the department's requirements, if it's important to get a professor, then you have to send code emails. Uh, if it's not important, then maybe you might just introduce yourself to the graduate coordinator, just to show enthusiasm that you are going to apply the fourth from January, right? So it's not really about getting a professor, but just showing, showing up your name before it's called in the review committee. So uh, that might help you. But in, in a case where they, they require you to send emails then and, or to get a professor, then it's absolutely important to send an email. So I think there is a second part to that question. Mm -hmm. yeah, another next question. Can you, can you repeat the second question? Okay, I said um, you got application fee waiver for some schools. Did it affect your chances of getting admission? Did you get admissions for the schools that you got with back you from? Did you get any admission from them? Yes, I got admission from the remaining six schools that offered um, application fee waiver. I, I said I inquired about why about three schools didn't give me admission. It was because of my GRE. I didn't submit okay. GRE. So oh. the application sometimes, Dr. Bajia once told us that, or just once told us that, application fee waivers, because when a, a department or school tells you that they are giving application fee waivers, a lot of people would apply to that school. So somehow, somehow, it lessens your, your chances of getting into that school. Okay. My home case, I, didn't, I don't think it's affected, it affects my application, because I still got into school, I, I got um, application fee waivers from. Okay, thank you. So you, that was still, a... <laughs> you still got six schools that give you application fee. Yes. Good. So, um, oh. I think we answered this question from. Uh, um, so, can, can, um, can McDonald unmute? Um, Good evening, Doc. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Everyone. Yes, I have a question to ask. My wife graduated with first class uh, with a CGP of about 4.7. And I want her to apply for school, full scholarship, but I want to know the chances of her uh, getting a full scholarship uh, funded full uh, funded scholarship and both of us traveling together. I want to know the chances. I want to know if it's possible for we the family traveling together with it, even when she have a full scholarship that is funded. So um, let me clarify that your wife, right? Yes. So you said she has uh, what GPA? 4.7. Out of five? Yes. Uh, is this um, HND or BSc? 
BSc Microbiology from Uniben. Are you still doing in Nigeria? Um, anyway, she has a great chance if she fulfills all, all the requirements for certain schools. So I think your question is what, what, what are the chances? Yeah, if you have. Yeah, for uh, every have family to go with her. Right, if you have an assistantship, yeah, people travel with their families all the time. So um, what she will get, what she will get is an F1 visa and um, you guys will get an F2 visa. So it's, the F2 visa is made for such situations. Um, the, the only downside is you would have to make sure that um, I think the I-20, I think that there'll be some provisions in the I-20 that must stipulate that the, her income will be sufficient to take care of you know, the family because as the spouse, as the F2 spouse, they will not be able to work. So, okay. yeah. So when, when you get to that big deal, I'm sure you will it. But it's, it's really not a big deal. People do it all the time. The first thing okay. is to make her get that uh, okay. Okay, Doc. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank no you. Problem. Um, yeah, that's so all. We, we have to the question. Did yes. you apply Thank for you. application over before commencing your application or after submission? It depends. It depends. Some schools would ask you to. It depends on the requirements. Some schools will ask you to complete your application. Then you will now send an email to the graduate coordinator or the graduate school to waive your application. And some, some would give you application fee waiver. Waiver code, coupon, yes. I, I remember the University of Kansas gave me a coupon that I would input when I'm asked to make the payment for the application fee. So it depends on the school. As long as they grant you application fee waiver, you already established that um, acceptance from them. They will tell you what to do. Maybe during application, when you're asked to make the payment, there's a code you will enter, or they would automatically um, effect um, the waive the application fee from you. Just leave it there. Don't do anything. They would waive it for you. So maybe after 24 hours or 48 hours, you would have seen that your application has been submitted successfully without the payment. So it depends on the scope. School, different schools have different methods of waiving application fee for applicants. All right. Um, so I'm going to go to YouTube before I come back to Zoom. So we have our first question on YouTube. Um, I made a second. I made a second class lower in biochemistry from a Nigerian university, and I am applying for the fall 2023 in the USA. How possible is it to get admission with funding scholarships? Hmm, good question. So, um, for people that know me, I'm, I'm not a motivational speaker, so uh, I'm not going to sweet, sweet talk anything. <laughs> I don't sweet talk. But I'm going to tell you um, it's going to be difficult, okay? But it's not impossible. So because you, you don't have the greatest of GPA, it's going to be difficult. Uh, what could help? You know, sometimes when you do waste evaluation, it kind of bumps up your, your GPA a little bit, a tiny bit. But at the end of the day, I believe if you, if you have anything less than a 2 1, a second class offer, I think applying, I think taking some of the exams would um, really help your chances. But if you have a low GPA and you are still running away from exams, well, I don't know what else can show these people that they are ready for the rigors of grad school. So it's not impossible, but you really need to prove to them extra hard about you know, blazing some of these exams. GRE. Okay, that's, that's what I can say there. That would be Excuse me, doctor. I'm trying yeah. to reply some messages I can attend to on this chat right now. So if you have question in the chat box, you may check while he's responding to um, messages from um, the YouTube channel, please. All right. 
So I think I answered that question. So our second question is, I have a second class lower in BA and second class upper in masters. How can I process admission for PhD with scholarships? So the same thing goes for you, like the, the previous person, even though you, you had um, a better GPA for your master's, a lot of things will still go back to your bachelor's uh, because let's say you're applying to the same field, they want to look at the prerequisites and of course, your undergraduate might show that you have a, a, a low grade in those prerequisites. So that, that's re really how they look at them. They, they just don't look at your transcript overall. They look at specific courses as well and look at what you, you got in those courses. That may, you know, we call them prerequisites. I don't know what that means. So if you did well in those prerequisites, then it may, it may help your case. But if you did not, then it's, it's still going to um, affect you a little bit. So what you can do is, of course, you, like everyone else, you have to apply to a lot of places, but you still have to write a solid SOP, uh, probably explaining why your grades were low. If you have to, sometimes you don't have to. But at the end of the day, I, I, I still say that um, for, for people who don't have a great undergraduate GPA, um, doing some of these exams, it, it's going to help you a lot if you can pass them very well. I'm not saying without them, you, you, won't, be, you won't be at an advantage, but it's still going to help you if you can do some of these exams. So don't run away from it. So. Just if you, if you can afford it, just do it. So it's not impossible. Let me just say that. I think on this channel, I shared the example of one person who had a third class and um, still got admitted and came But she had to like excel in those exams, GRE and so forth. So I think those things are key. Now, if you have a low GPA, I should mention this, if you have a low GPA and you are still going to schools, you are applying to schools that do not need these exams, maybe they waive the TOEFL and GRE. Best believe that there will be a lot of candidates that have better results than you, so there is no reason to keep you. That's why most of you get accepted anyway. But if you have a low GPA and um, you, you study hard for these exams and you pass them, you will be able to apply to more places, that's one. Then they may be able to overlook that uh, low GPA because you passed the exams. So it shows, kind of shows your resume. Why did you choose to apply for West Evaluation despite your strong CGPA from your HMD program? I think we, we answered that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because they wouldn't understand what your HMD or ND means. Okay. Uh, some don't even understand how to interpret our bachelor's degree. So they still ask for West evaluation, which kind of compares or, or, or translates it to US standards. So that's, that's the benefit of West evaluation. And if you have a good GPA, you still have, you will still have a good GPA even after West evaluation. But well, at least they will understand what uh, the transcript means. Did you mail supervisors before applying to schools? Um, no, let that. Uh, I think we answered that too. She didn't uh, email everyone unless it was stated in the department's uh, on the department's web page that it's important to contact supervisors. Hmm. Are there scholarships available? For for an architecture student, and please, sir, can you also help with the processing too? 
I don't know what you mean by help with the processing. Um, so if you can be specific on what help you mean. But I don't process for people. Okay. Um, but I'm sure there will be opportunities available in the architecture area. As a matter of fact, I have a I have a friend, an old friend at um, New Penn, doing a master's in architectural design. So I know that uh, there are opportunities there. They are qualified. All right, going back to our Zoom, and um, let's, let's hear June's. June's. June's, if you can unmute and um, ask your question. Uh, James Snow. Yes. All right. Blessing. Blessing. Oh, all right. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. So I just have a few questions, but I'll go straight to the point. So I graduated from my I graduated from University of Bini, Department of Microbiology. My CGP is about um 4.74 in scale of 5.0. That was 2019. And um, I have like one publication because I serve in university, that's that State University. But currently, I'm not working. I started working last year, November, in Lagos, but it's in the marketing role. So my first question is that, okay, this, I'm hearing about West. I don't know what West is. I don't know if it's actually for just um, HND or actually it's also for BSc, like using my results. I have to do West. That's my first question. And um, second, talking about the supervisor's method, I actually have um, someone in my circle that just he got he's got he got um fully funded PhD not by applying to the school but applying like emailing supervisors and that's how he got it. I don't know if that's also an easy way. That's second question. And also number three, I think that's two for now. Yes, two. So yeah, maybe before you answer it, I will have the other questions to ask. Thank you. All right, let me start with the, with the second one. So the, the second question was, um, is it easier to get admitted if you email professors, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, so if the, if, of course, if the, if the school requires that, that you email professors before them, of course, it's easier if you can get a professor, if you can, if you can get a reply. You know, getting replies from these professors, uh, it's, it, it's the most challenging thing. But if you kind of hit that jackpot, you have to send a lot of business. So if you need to hit that jackpot, then uh, the professor will likely schedule an interview and uh, uh, if the professor likes you, they will stick up for you during the admission review process. Then that makes it easy for you. Even if there are some limitations in certain areas of your, of your uh, qualification, of your credential. So if, I, would, I wouldn't say it's easier uh, because to get there, it's a little difficult to send emails. It's, for some of you that have been doing it, you know how difficult it is to get replies. But if you can get it, true, that means it's always easier. If the professor shows interest in you. So uh, I would recommend doing both approaches. Um, you'll send emails, and even if you if you find departments or universities that say you don't need to send emails here, you might still try to apply, but at least just combine the two. There are places that require you to send emails. Uh, because if you can get professors interested in you, I think that's always the easier. Okay. Um, so the first question, uh, uh, can you remind me of the first one? You said you had a okay. four. Uh, yeah, so the first question is that I'm asking this works evaluation, is right. it, um, yes, I might do it or it doesn't really affect me getting admitted. You, you have a bachelor's, right? You said University of Virginia. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's like, like, I think we said earlier, it's not always compulsory, okay, for bachelor's people. Uh, because some schools will be able to understand your, your transcript and you, you have a great GPA. So uh, not, 
I mean, except this university explicitly states that you have to do. So I, I wouldn't worry about them, except just, of course, if you have the money, and money it's always okay. good like to do. But a lot of universities can still admit you without the worst evaluation. So I wouldn't really spend money on that right now. Uh, thank you. Then the third question I have now, the working as a I work as a product specialist in um, a medical where they sell medical devices and all that. So I majorly I manage microbiology products. But I'm thinking about it because the role is actually more inclined to marketing commercials. So is it okay for me to include that in my academic CV? Um if you don't include it, what, what would you say you are doing down the gap? <laughs> so actually, I discussed with a friend before, but I don't know how it looks like because uh, looking at the role more of if most of the job things I do, my job role is related to commercials, like all um, basically commercials, yes. And um, it was like, should I? I, I served in a graduate, um, Middle State University as a graduate assistant. That if I should go back to the professors like who I served it and extend my like I'm still working there, something like that, and remove the product specialist from my CV. I don't know how that, I don't know if actually I, if including me to my CV, we actually reduce my chances of getting admitted, knowing that it's not really research work I'm doing. I understand. Um, mm -hmm. of, uh, I'm, I'm very careful of how, how I put, it, put this, but I mean, whatever you include in your CV is what they know. Or they, uh, there is no way for them to find out. Okay, so mm -hmm. so you you are working in a microbiology. You said it's related to microbiology, right? Ah uh, yes, we sell medical devices. So I I make I actually manage the microbiology instrument, but you know, it's more of commercial. Like I said, it's not like research something. What, what was your what was your undergraduate? Sorry. What was your undergraduate degree? Microbiology. Uh -huh. BS. So there, there is still some relatedness, even though it's not research. So they don't only train people for research, they also train people to this um, area as well. So just I would say um, you should, when, when you describe what you are doing under that role, maybe just relate it more to, to the science oh. aspect. You know, when you're yeah. and not, don't stress the marketing aspect too much. Yes, 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 yes. And yes so yes, you yes. just have to apply with them and how you describe it. Yes, 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 yes. I understand. I understand. And Thank when, you. when you explain that experience to, if you have to talk about it, the SOP, then you kind of express it more towards the, the, the science area, the impact mm -hmm. of what you're doing as relates to the science of you know, your product. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. That, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So what, whatever you put in your documents are the only thing that you can have, okay? So you have to... It's, yes. Um, it's your baby to, to nurture. Okay, that's what Yes. All right. That's, so thank you, sir. Thank you. That all? Yes, for now. And second, okay, sorry, the last one, because this is a very good opportunity for me to ask. <laughs> there, I don't have my transcript yet because we finally asked me to subscribe in February, and there's no for me to get into school to get my transcript. And I, you know, I've been delayed for application since February. I've not applied for to have my transcript. So I, I have my document, like my results, 200 level, 300, 400 level results with me on my. Um, on my school website. So I'm thinking, is there a way I should, I should just combine the documents together, attach it to my statement of your have my statement of your that states my class of degree, and any way to match it together if some schools can actually accept that because I don't have my transcript and I don't even know when at this house we call of this track. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, your transcript online on your student portal and then use it for application. Oh, didn't I get a question right? Not, not no, problem. I don't have the transcript online. My school don't yeah. have transcript online. Just only your results, like your each level result, 200 and, and the GPA, you know, like 200 level, this result, the GPA, like all the courses you offer that semester. Can, can, and I, can I speak? Can I speak? Can I speak on this, please? I'm sorry. 
I'm a Unibain student, and uh, recently Unibain just provided a transcript on your portal that students copy of a transcript, so you can you actually can get that now. You can access it again. You can try. You can access it again. Remember, the transcript Unibain updated on the portal is not even accurate. <laughs> it's not accurate at all. Um, you understand? Well, I, I, I've also tested it. It's not accurate. I remember, if you check it now, it has been disabled from the portal. Yeah, what I was saying. You have to be very careful with the transcript you apply to school if there's any discrepancy between what you submit and what your school letter sent to um the official transcript your school letter sent to your school after admission there'll be problems so mm. i would suggest that you just just keep pushing and be patient you'll be fine yeah. right so so i wouldn't i wouldn't suggest doing what you what you say it's not gonna i don't think it's gonna help you um like statement of 200 and 400 and statement of 12. But you can ask them, you can always ask them and say, this mm. is what I have. And because of the strike, I'm not able to get mm. full transcript. Can this still be used to evaluate my, uh, my application? And uh, maybe after admission, I can provide on the first starting my yeah. so, <coughs> no, so you can always ask, but I mean, I believe the trans your transcript is like one of the most important things that, that they use to evaluate um, candidates. So, um, yeah, I'll ask ask them, and I wish you luck with that. Hopefully, as soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. All right, is June there? If I go back to now. June. No, HMD Global, not here. G Trends. I've answered this question in the chat box. Also. Oh, okay. Uh, so, no, he's been asking questions to her. So, um, so Mr. Ibrahim Salisu. <clears throat> All right, please go ahead. Please, for information regarding West Evaluation, just check west.org. Everything you need, you will find it there, the requirement, the cost, and doctor, right? Um, cost by cost evaluation is recommended. And so just check cost by cost evaluation, requirements, and the, the cost. You'll find it there, everything. I don't know how much it costs now because I applied since 2019. How much was it in 2019? I think I paid one one hundred sixty-five dollars. Then the the if I want them to keep my trans my evaluation report with them, I have to pay two hundred five dollars. So I opted for one sixty-five dollars then, because I didn't really need them to send to the school. All right, Mr. Ibrahim, are you there, please? Okay, yes, I'm here. So thank you very much. Please let me go straight to. Ah, uh, please, we can't hear you very well. Okay. What can, you hear? can you hear me very well now? Yes, we can. We can, it's faint, but we can manage. Okay, please. Uh, the question I have now is that uh, you have HND distinction. Are you getting me clear? Yeah. If you, have, if you apply for PhD direct and you evaluate your credential, at what level do you submit the research proposal, the research work you are going to do at the PhD level? For chemistry, I didn't submit any research proposal. I only, in my SOP, I included my research interest. The solution. Yeah, before you continue, can you, can you repeat the question? Before I... Okay, okay. Okay, my, my question is that when you finish with HND at the initial level, so, and you evaluate your results, you get into a PhD direct full funded. Yeah, at what time? Awesome. At what time are you going to write your own proposal? Before is it during the application or until when you arrive at the school before you be able to write your own uh, PhD proposal? All right, I think I can. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So what do you say? Doctor? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. So for my own, um, I think it's program, it depends on the program you're applying for. 
for me, I didn't need to submit any research proposal because I would have to do some kind of lab rotations before I finally join a particular lab. But in my SOP, my statement of purpose, I included the research I would love to undergo, the problem I would love to solve with my research and what my, my career goals, um, yeah, my career goals. So I didn't need to submit any research proposal. Okay, so I think thank you. Very for most schools, yes, that, that's the same for most schools and programs. Unless you're finding a professor and the professor asks you to submit a research proposal. Doctor, I don't know if I'm wrong. Most schools, most people I've seen, they didn't submit any research proposal. Okay. For US schools, for US schools. I don't know about other schools. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, no problem. And in question number two, please. When you are seeking for admission, when you maybe as me now, I submitted an application online to any maybe to one of the US in US. At what time did they this did they go to give you the feedback whether you are you are going to get funded? Oh, sorry, go... disconnection. I can't hear you, please. I can't hear you. I, I'm struggling to hear you as well. So if you if you can put your question in the chat. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Can you hear me? It's it's tough. <clears throat> Hello? Can you hear me now? It's very okay. yes, we can hear you, but it's very, very faint. Like we can't hear you clearly. Okay. Can you put it's it in the network? I'm not the one. I okay. know. I understand. Put it in the chat. Okay. 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 All right. I think the first question was um do, do, when did you write your PhD proposal? And Mia answered that you don't have to, at least for US um, schools, most US schools do not ask you to do that. They assume you are still coming for some level of training. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you are in the program, maybe I think most departments have uh, a course that would really be on how to write proposals, how to write grants. So you will learn that during uh, the program. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that now. Okay? All you need to worry about is how to write a good essay. Mm -hmm. Um, and you should know that, I think you mentioned it earlier, if you seek application with fee waivers, as in some universities, they will require you to write for ethics. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's not always uh, without any problem. I remember University of Massachusetts in Amherst telling me that I should relate one kind of research with theoretical knowledge that I have. So, but here and I tried my best and I got the offer. I even had to upload my pay slip because they were asking and I converted my, my salary to um, dollars while applying. So a lot of things needed to be put in place before they could offer you. Right. So I, I should say that when you're looking for waivers, of course, you <clears throat> it's great if you, you know, appeal to their their emotions, right? In terms of, you know, your, uh, my, maybe my parents' uh, wages are equivalent for $100, right? And I've spent some money on XYZ exam, getting my transcript and all. So you can, you can say all that, but if you have some evidence that you can attach, that would be great. So if you, if you have evidence of your pay slip or your Parents pay sleep just to show them that what I'm saying is true and it would be great if I if I get this way. That always uh, helps. Okay. And when they see that, most of the time they will, they will always try to help you. So you, uh, I think bottom line is you, you don't have to wait till you see uh, these schools post on social media that app. Shuffling with that on so so they, because most of the time they will end up getting because they've posted on social media, right? They yeah. will always get a lot of people applying to that department of that school, which reduces your chances. But you just go and search for your own schools. I always advise that you go through your own research interests and yeah, so find that's... these schools. Just do the same, seek for the way that you like to get. Search for schools, check the um, chat box, check 
can use um, printing review. Printing review. Right. I remember, I remember last year, and I think that's also going to do it this year, uh, University of Alabama or something. Yes. We have this application free week. Yes, so it's so bad. Are, oh, so bad. That doesn't mean it, they're going to increase the number. I didn't get into Alabama, doctor. The competition was just too much, I guess. <laughs> I didn't get so, into Alabama. Do, uh, when they do things like that, they will get so much. And I know some people have not even heard back from them. They yes. just have a ton of them. So don't, I'm not saying you shouldn't go for them, but don't put all your eggs in the basket of things that, that use social media to advertise these things. <clears throat> all right, so um, Jums, I see you are there. Do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Right. Good evening. Good evening, Doctor, and good evening, Islamia. My question is that um, I'm actually planning to apply for MSc in data science or data analytics. And then with my, I have um, OND and HND in mathematics and statistics. And then I'm running, I have like a couple of courses I've run on online platform like Udemy, Data Camp, and Coursera. So I was going to ask if I can attach those certificates to like um, my application while I'm applying. Does it make sense? Or would, would those certificates have like any effects or would they do anything to boost my chances? All right, Mia, do you want to go for that? Yes. Start, not and start. I, I, I have a lot of friends that got into that program, statistics, data analysis, bioinformatics, and the like. So I think you have um, a very high, greater chances of getting a fully project. However, I would suggest, because it's master's, doctor, you know you told us, and this, as it, I think I also confirmed that, that there are a lot of scholarships opportunities for um, PhD applicants. That master's degree, um, those seeking MSc. So you should be able to get it. Yes, you should. You should with your certification because I I did some online courses as well. I did some okay. online courses aside. So with your ND, your HND, your work experience as I think a data analyst, Abby. No, 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 no. I well currently I'm currently in the military. And well, I, I'm not sure my work experience can really count because I'm I don't I'm not really doing anything related to data or data science or analytics. I graduated last year. I graduated last year from Catholic. I actually did my end in Ilaru too, and I'm from Ilaru. But then I graduated last year from Cardinal Polytechnic. So my I'm working, but then it is not my work is not really related to data or statistics. So I might not really be able to right. my work experience. Well, you've done some online courses related to statistics. Yes. Right? I've done some online courses. I'm currently enrolled in Coursera Google Data Analytics course. And what about, by by like in how about so? like in one I should be done. I should be done with that course in like a month or two. Okay. So you just have to. We will we'll, we'll try. You should try. You should try. Okay. The, the good thing is you 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 are not so far from your graduation, right? So so this is a good time to to start trying. Mm -hmm. like you said your your um, courses, the online courses, they they should be useful. Right? I sometimes put the courses that I do on, right? That is somewhere on my CV, you see, continuing education. So I just okay. my online courses there. And of course, you can attach them if you have the opportunity to attach, attach the set and do that. Okay. Uh, but like you said, I must, I must say that um, if you're applying for a master's, it's a uh, it's, it's easier to get into a master's program, or it's difficult to get funded in a master's program. Funded. Right. So it's easier to get into a master's program, but it's 
unlike PhD, it's difficult to get into a PhD program, but it's easier to get funded in PhD program. So you just have to decide which one you want to look for. You want it very easy. Masters will be easy, but the likelihood that you will get funded is... Even for chemistry that is well-funded, Mm-hmm. When you get master's degree, um, when you get upper, um, when you are upper admission for master's degree, you may not even get scholarship at all. You may not get funding at all. Right. So, so you either we want to go for the easy one or the difficult one. It's all your choice. So when, when I when I talk to people, I remember uh, during Islamia's time in the group, we had two PhD students. One one decided to go for a master's because at he got admitted, but wasn't funded. That was just the only. But she went for the difficult one, and she got funded. So, tell your choice what you want to go for. Okay. Okay. Oh so, yeah, it should be fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problems. Oh my God. Hello, doctor. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't... <laughs> Doctor, please, can I ask my question? Yes, Adibaya. All right. Good morning. Oh, good evening. Sorry. Thanks for this privilege. Actually, um, I will. I will just make it fast. Actually, I'm not. I am. I'm a very diligent student initially. I love agriculture, and I went to Federal College of Agriculture. That's where I obtained my um, ND. So I did direct entry into the university of Ibadan and I was expecting a lot of things to happen and unfortunately the way the education system seems I just slide it off that I lose interest in education to be precise let me just put it that way so I managed to graduate with two two are you with me sir yes all right. So now, um, actually, since then, I've lost interest. In fact, scholarship, scholarship, I don't even think of it. Even abroad, home and abroad. So I've just made up my mind that I'm not the type that is really into education like that. And I don't want to be much more involved in education. But coming to this platform, I now see more enlightenment and I'm getting to understand that this thing is not really as difficult as it is. Now, in my case, do you think I can push for that because I graduated with distinction for my ND. That's how I was able to cross to the university for my um, BSc. But since then, I just shut the door of willing and passion to learn. So because of that, I've diverted. I'm now into into data science. So I don't know. The, I feel now being on this call, I feel that passion to now feel like, okay, maybe I can now start learning. How do you think I can achieve that? Uh, so you, you know that um, because you, I think by now you should know that because you have a attitude to sort of make things a little bit more difficult, right? But not impossible. Yeah. Um, so if you if you now claim that you have the passion to learn, then how are you going to show the admission committee that you have passion to learn? It's simple. You just have to try to do some of these exams. That's okay. that's what I think. I don't think you can. I don't think you feel like you can run away from exams. Yeah, actually. Right, because that's one of the important things that you can use to show that yeah, that I have passion. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it will still be important if you do that waste evaluation so they can do both your ND and the PSC uh, transcript. They can, sorry, uh, so that they can evaluate your ND and PSC transcript. And you never know, I don't know how low your, your, your GPA is. Sometimes people that have this high TP, when they do this waste evaluation, they still fall within 3.0 out of four, which is the minimum for both, uh, most schools in the US. <clears throat> so um, I guess what, I, what I'm saying is I would encourage you to, to start running through the process by, I think one of the first things you have to do is to 
of course, search for schools, but at the end of the day, you would have to show the school that you are now a good candidate. You might have to because I don't think you have enough research experience, right? No, not at all. I just have to shed myself of education completely. Okay. I just have to lay my hands on it. On something more practical and something that once I do it, I just okay, this is the result. That's what made me start um, developing my career into data analysis, data engineering, and the likes. So, so I've come wide. What? How was your undergraduate degree? GP, I think I had uh, oh, the 2.6 out of degree, BSc yeah. engine. That's BSc engine. BSc. Yes, in engineering. Which engineering? Sir? Which engineering? Which specific? Ag agricultural and environmental engineering. Oh, okay. Sometimes and they call it agricultural and bioresources engineering. How long ago did you graduate? I, I graduated 2000 and last year, yes, because I'm currently serving. Okay. Oh, that means you don't, I thought you. So you don't have, you still don't have like an extensive experience in data analysis. I thought you, you said you were doing some data analysis, yeah. right? Yes, I was doing it while in school. So I've built some projects. I'm even running some courses, scholarships on some courses. I'm currently on the Audacity Nano Degree Scholarship. And I've won some scholarship like that, which I've used to build projects. And I've done some, some research work using data and like, and I'm also volunteering for an NGO at the moment too. So yeah, I should, I if you want to go through the data analysis route, some of these programs don't really care what your background is, especially yes, yeah, yeah. so they, they can take people from any background because yeah. of course you need data analysis in any field. But yes, the, the downside to data analysis uh, programs, mm -hmm. because a lot of people want to do them, it's like a hot cake. So funding is uh, kind of limited. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so that's one thing you should keep in mind. And if you want to go through your undergraduate route, engineering would be, engineering is very tough to get into. If you yeah. But and instead, you should not be discouraged. Just yes, sir. go uh, start the process and um, start looking at these things and their requirements. And um, of course, you need to decide what you want to do that. Continue the data analysis route or continue your engineering uh, program. Right. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is another question I want to ask. Actually, based on a precedence from the one I just concluded, I, after I discovered, because whenever I see people who are more passionate about education, I don't discourage them because I know that that's my own choice. So I don't use my own to get them off the track. So I see people who are much more, who has more tendency to have scholarships that I see the potential in them that this person is very, can work, can gain scholarships. So I most times always want to help them to achieve that. But because I'm streamlined with information, but now I think with all this information I have on this call, I'm very grateful for that. So with that, I want to relate a question as regards someone to you now. The person did um, NC, no, had social work, yes, to be precise, social work, and that is BSEA do. And the person has concluded the master's to the master's in UI, University of Ibadan too. Now I am thinking of helping the person through the process of applying scholarship because you know not everybody has the charisma to want to push further, I want to explore opportunities. So I'm thinking, how can I achieve that? How can I help someone like that? Unfortunately, I don't do so on behalf of on behalf of another person. If uh, okay, I don't think you can do this on behalf of someone. If that person is not ready, it's not gonna work. Okay, okay. So okay. if that person is ready, well, there, are, there are a lot All of right. things that you can't do on behalf of that person. And if you try to do that, oh. it's, it's going to be like you're uh, forcing them. You no, know, not forcing. It's even going to go, go against anything the academia stands for. So you are going to like, you are going to have to write just essays for them. Are you going to do that for them? 
Right, so I can't do that. But <laughs> that's why I said if this person is not ready, then there is little we can do, or you can, or you can do. All right, sir. So it's not going to work. In my experience, that's never worked. If the person is not ready. Well, okay. so yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Because I like so, so how Hello, do I go too. about searching for schools? I'm going to check on this ID. Hello, hello, sir. Hello, hello, doctor. Hello, good evening, sir. Is this Mr. Tunde Lawa? Yes, exactly. Um, first and foremost, I have a very loud background. Okay, let me let me let me reduce it, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, I highly appreciate what you are really doing for us. Uh, I applied for Illinois State University for my PhD in educational administration. Then alongside, I also applied for... Sorry, I have to mute you. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello, doctor. A lot of noise coming from... There's too much noise coming from the microphone. You can't hear anything in your screen. Bro, maybe I should speak on it because you have not said anything about my own question, even on your videos. All right. Um, honorable. Okay, thank you very much, sir. If I'm here, I just want to say another congratulations to you. I believe that you are still going to win more. Sir, my questions, I just have two questions, sir. Okay. I've watched so many of your videos, but I'm here to see a place where you are talking about social science, how to get a professor with grants on social science, something like Islamic study. For instance, my wife finished with two one in Islamic study, so she will appreciate if she can get a PhD, maybe in any Islamic country. You know, you know better. So we just need you to recommend maybe a website for us where we can see professor with grant in Islamic study, maybe it has to do with crisis, with religion or whatever, anything that has to do with Islam. Yeah. That's number one. The second question is that I'm also a 2-1 graduate with, in chemistry. And I would like if I can cross from chemistry, Pure and apply chemistry, if I can cross BSc from pure and apply chemistry to chemical engineering, PhD fully funded, if that is possible. If it is not possible, maybe okay. I should go directly for chemistry. I just want you to recommend. I know I've watched something about science where we can get professor with grant, but that of ah, uh, and I want you to explain better about a family traveling together. So you said something about F2 something, but I don't really get what you are trying to explain. Thank All you. Right. Let, let me let me quickly answer you. I think I've seen your comments. Um, and I didn't reply because I really don't know where you can get a scholarship for Islamic studies yet. But if I find something, I'll let you know. Okay, promise. So, but I don't know, I don't know where you can get uh, anything from Islamic studies yet. Uh, but one of the things I can suggest is, uh, you know, go to Google Scholar or PubMed and just search maybe Islamic studies, USA, and see the people or the professors doing stuff on Islamic studies, if there are any. The papers- googlescholar.com or dot org, what's the phone? Yeah, googlescholar.com. Okay, sir. So just type ah. Islamic studies, USA, okay. and um, some papers should pop up. If there, are, if there are any, any uh, professors doing publishing stuff on Islamic studies, then you can, you know, uh, click those links and look at the papers, you will see the university uh, that the professor comes from the paper, then you can go to the university and do some more research on the professor uh, on the department's website. So that's, and this goes for every other person, you can do this for, for if you have a specific research interest or Degree in mind, you can also do this for anything. So that's what I would suggest for you for now. But if I see anything better than that, I'll let you know. Now, the second question on person from chemistry to chemical engineering. Um, as far as sense right now will tell me that's very difficult to do. 
you know, it's it's gonna it's easier to to change fields in certain areas, but in your own case, I I say it's gonna be difficult because you know one, one of the things you guys should note is that they are not just looking at your GPA; they are looking at your transcripts and specific courses that you have done during your undergrad that will make you able to cope with the courses in grad school. So when they look at your chemistry transcripts, are they gonna see things like advanced calculus or you know all these mathematical or physics related courses that you would need to proceed in an engineering program in grad school? Are they gonna see that? If they are not going to see that, then they will likely not get admitted. So it's difficult to make that change at least in my own opinion, from chemistry to chemical engineering, you don't have a solid maths uh, background. Yeah. In undergrad. So, so my advice for now is at least get into a chemistry program, maybe for your master's. Then if you, like I said, PhD is easier to get from it. I mean, it's difficult to get into a PhD program, but easier to get from it. It's difficult to get funded in a master's program, but easier to get into a master's So let's say you get into a master's program, right? Oh, you get funded. Yeah, During those, that master's program, you can try to take some elective classes in all this um, in the engineering program of maths so that you can qualify for an engineering program for your PhD. Also, can I have that? Yeah. Um, side on the re your research interest, the research you are you are really really interested in. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think you should. You can just say that you want to apply to chemical engineering. What research mm. are they doing in chemical engineering department that you feel you are interested in or you're passionate about? In fact, your research interest may not even be in chemical engineering, maybe in materials engineering, because I have a friend who got into materials engineering. And had um, ke um chemistry background, so it depends on your research interest. That's just in addition to what Doctor has, has said earlier. It depends on your research interest. If you have a research interest that is in the um, engineering department, you have to have a background like taking courses in calculus, which I know. I think I know the person is talking. I don't. You had calculus. You did calculus in your handy days, and that could assist you. Okay, but then. Yeah. Have to know your research interest. <coughs> okay, thank you. We can we can allow another person to ask question. I I think what you have said so far, I really understand. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Hello doctor. doctor. Yeah. About, Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Hello. Yeah, I, I I would I would give everyone an opportunity to ask questions. So I'm going okay. to go to the, Mr. Adekule Ajayi next. I'm, I'm going to talk yeah. to Mr. Sunde. I think you know uh, uh, that you can, you can hear a lot of uh, background. Um, okay. So, so Mr. Definitely. Yeah. Good evening, Doctor. Hello? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay. Good evening. Then, um, good evening, Slamia. Then I am then as in congratulations on your on your new IM achievements. Thank so you. I I I actually get to know about this um Bro, hello, this, um, no. hello? Yeah, um, hello? okay I said I, I actually get to know about this um your very indefatigable great achievement for my sister that's a um, um, wafa from the Federal Protective Lago. Okay. So I, yeah, yes. So I, 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 as a person, I actually finished with um, distinction in chemistry from Moshuda Biola Polytechnic. Hello. Yeah, with you. Please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I finished with a distinction that's three point five seven out of four point zero. So I, I, I just want to know how slim my chances are. To either get a fully funded master's program or PhD pro or PhD program, I don't I don't know if how possible that might be. Though I've been applying for some scholarship 
um, as in as I've been as I've been I'm I've been I'm applying for some for some for some scholarship for a long time now, but I don't I just don't know how to go about those those um those links that are sent to me. So when I heard about your story, I just I just think I should just give it another shot. Though I, I finished my program back then, 2019. So I, I just finished service this year. So I just think of, you know, applying for another um, scholarship, any any available um, program that is that is I am very much available, either in master's or straight up to PhD. I don't know how you can actually help me on that. This is for you, Mia. You want me to help you on what, please? Sorry. No, as in, I, I just, I just need advice, not help, not, not just help to the police as having to be precise. I just, I just need advice on maybe like going straight to PhD or applying for some masters. Scholarship. All right. What, so you, what's your field, uh, please? Chemistry. Oh, well, if you are passionate about um, going for a PhD, I would, I, I would definitely advise you for a PhD because you get funded going for a PhD directly than going for masters. Okay. So PhD is your best bet if you know that you can commit um, like four to five years of your time to research. Okay. Okay. Doctor might have advice as well, but that's my own advice. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank you. So, hello, perhaps. hello, doctor. Hello, hello, doctor. What do you have for me? What what advice can you actually give me? Yeah, let our both talk. <laughs> then, as I can say, as in, you can actually help me with some links to Islamia. I don't, I, I, I don't mind. You can, you can actually. Link. Sorry, I'm very, very busy right now. You can just check my LinkedIn post. I've posted a lot of stuff there. How you can think about it. Check Dr. Baba video or just um, watch his videos on YouTube. Okay. You'll be fine, honestly. But one on one okay. for one on one guidance right now, I cannot go into it. That is the reason why Dr. Baba video just said we should even have this um, session so that we can have this discussion and rub minds together. Okay. Okay. Hello, hello, doctor. Hello. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Hello. Hello. Hold on, I don't think is this your hello. Start Sunday, you should. Your microphone is still. still. Please, Mr. Start Sunday. You're, you're, we can't hear anything with your microphone. Come Hello, in. doctor. Hello. Hello. Um, Hello. So, oh, doctor. Uh, before we take before we take the next um, question, so I put I put a, a a small video in the chat. If anyone that has a picture, this chat. Um, so from there we can we can move on to you know the general things that other people do. So please check out that video. And I think okay. So that's that's the advice that I can give you. Make any Hello. So um, let's go to uh, you. I'm just doing it. As so, Mr. Ayubajima, please do you have? Unique All right, Mr. Yuba is not here. Amina Lawal. 
Hello, doctor. Yes. Hello. Thank you so much for this section. Let me narrate my, I'm not a science-based student, I'm in the social sciences. I had my first degree in UI. I did economics education. And during my undergraduate days, I did economics education. So I had a GP of 5.3. We use a scale of seven in UI. So I have 5.3. So I already did my master's in industrial relations. I did my master's, I had a distinction, a proceed to PhD. But I intend doing my PhD outside the country. So I did that in 2016, 2017. So just because I intend to have my PhD outside, it has debarred me from looking at putting out for a PhD program. Presently, I'm a teacher. So I teach economics in Lagos State, one of the Lagos State schools. Do you understand? The major, my main constraint has been writing publications to my name. Over the years, I've done courses, online courses to boost my CV. I've attended conferences that are related to mainly economics, but not, do you understand? Because I'm now in the teaching line, but I intend to go into industrial, human resource and industrial relations in particular for my PhD. Can you hear me very well? Yes. So that's my intent. But just because I'm streamlined, just because I don't have access to writing publications in that field that I'm interested in doing my PhD in, I think it's a major bottleneck. And I think I've asked the question, same to Islamia, that how did she do it to put up our publications? So that, you know, one thing about this thing, I've applied to schools in Australia that had offered to come and do PhD, but I had problem with getting my master's transcripts from UI, I couldn't get it because during, it was this LATC, I think it was around June, I got that offer. So I could not get my transcript to continue my application. So I, I, I am, what I really want to know now is how can I get publication to support my CV? And is it compulsory for me to do IETS, GRE and well, West evaluation? So that is my question. That's really what I want to know. So that I'll know where to, to get things done from. So that's all I want to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> so good question. Um, so let me ask, what, what exactly is the problem with publication? Is it that you, I mean, what, what I want to understand why. Yeah, the problem is just because I'm not attached to any institution, okay. It is difficult for me to get somebody to do my research with and get it published. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Right. So did you, but you had a master's thesis, right? Yeah, I had my master's and my first degree dissertation. Master's. I have a master's in industrial relations. Master's thesis, like your dissertation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're asking. Right. So if you have that written in like a project form, why? Can't you convert that to a manuscript and work with your supervisor to, to publish? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's what we always do, right? Okay, okay. So you okay. can convert your, I mean, if it's a unique topic, you can okay. convert that in manuscript format and just email your supervisor that you, you're interested in publishing this. Okay, 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 okay. Um, but I mean, people like me, before I came here, we, we published even my, my undergrad projects. Even, okay. I mean, uh -huh, I'm, I'm, I mean, when I look, look back at the publication now, I'm always ashamed that. <laughs> but at least I published it and it worked. worked yeah, yeah, example. so. Okay. It's an experience that you know how to at least, you know, write a manuscript. Okay, okay. So that's okay. where I would start. First, have that published. It doesn't, okay. you know, you don't have to, of course, it's great if you can get published in, in nature or something, but just get it out there in any journal. Okay. 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 When you get okay. into your PhD program, you can start um, looking for high impact journals or something. Journals to work with. Okay. Right. Okay. I would think you should start there. And um, 
you have you have some good experience. I should say that economics programs are very competitive in the US. Even their own their own kids, even I mean, it's, it's it's um it's difficult because it's a, it's a prestigious. Uh, some of you may not know, but it's a prestigious um, field. In fact, they even have their own unique uh, Nobel Prize. So <laughs> to learn from Nobel, from Nobel. Like Nobel. So it's a pretty prestigious field that's difficult to get. But if you want to go the route of industrial relations or human resource. Right. So I, I would say, as Kamiya said earlier, okay. it's easier, and this is for everybody, it's easier if you have a respect interest. Okay. You would realize that if you search, if you go through this process by searching through your research interest, you might realize that your research interest has a different name when it comes to degree. Yeah, it might be in the department of. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's in school of business for most schools. Uh -huh. So in another school, it be in the school of business, another school, yeah. in the school of finance, you know, yeah. things like that. So so if you go through, if you just say you are looking for industrial relations, not a lot of, almost all the schools might not have a degree named international relations or industrial relations, but they might have it in another name. So okay. that's why it's, it's always better to go through. Okay. Please, doctor, I have another question, please. Oh. Right. I almost forgot to. Right. Uh -huh. <coughs> Sending cold emails. Because right. I, I understand that you keep reiterating that they should be professors. Like what you just said now, in contacting lecturers, when I want to contact people to send cold emails to, I find out that those that are in my area of interest are possibly doctors. Is it, is it a bad idea if I send mail to those doctors? Wouldn't they accept conducting a research or, else, or is it compulsory I get a prof? I see me, I want to take this one. <coughs> yeah, those, those people you are seeing doctor in their names are actually professors. Most of them are professors, but they won't write professor. Yeah, they just put doctors. A lot of my um, on the website find doctor, none of them as professor beside them on the website, but they are professors. Most of them are professors. So the doctor there doesn't mean they are not professors. Even when you want to send an email, you can address them as professor. They will clap it because they are on the path to become a professor if they are not. So it doesn't, okay. it doesn't mean. Doesn't okay, mean, okay. The doctor, they might know it doesn't even mean most times, and uh, sometimes they'll put associate professor or um, assistant professor, they are still professors. I would suggest that. No, you... no, what I'm trying to say is in this case, most of them, you know, Nigeria University now, when you call a doctor a professor, is well, when you call a professor, mistakenly call them doctor, is well. So, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't even know yeah, because of my yeah, professor, I understand. doctor, this, doctor, who, doctor. <laughs> And they are professors. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, because you are contacting them for the first time, I would just say the okay. default term is just use doctor. Okay, um, okay. Just doctors, X, Y, Z. But if you eventually get there, you will realize that we all call ourselves by our first name. So yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Okay. They, don't, they don't care about that. They don't okay. care. So. Just use doctor to be professional during um, the email process or application process. Please, doctor, will you recommend that I take all the needed exam like IELTS, GRE, or I just opt for IELTS first? Because I also know that when you have all the exam, it, it will reduce, it will increase your chances of getting the admission. That's it. Because I've also been doing my background work on it. So, but with the fact that when I, I did the... I already know now. Uh, it's just the truth. So I did my my uh, my each course evaluation on WS West West Org just to know what it will fall at. So I had three point three four, but I'm looking at it that if I had three point three four and the distinction in masters, if I have all these exams to my name, it will increase my chances 
So that's why I want to be sure to hear from the office mother. Is it a good idea that I take IETLs first, even though it is either recommended by the department or not? If I know I have all the exams to my to my name, I'll be doctor, which one will you advise I take first? You, I always say if you can take it, but I, I understand that there are several reasons why people cannot have these exams, either sure, sure. Um, cost yeah, sure. yeah, reasons, sure. uh, or time reasons. But the truth is, if you have all the exams, you will be able to apply to more schools. That's one. Then it will increase your chances uh, okay. for admission and hopefully funding. So okay. um, you already know that. So but you have to just decide what you want to do based on the resources that you have. Okay. Talking about money and time. Okay, okay. The but even okay. if you did not take any uh, some of these exams, Islamia did not did not take the GRE, right? And um, she was just then if you did not take GRE, then you don't have to apply to schools that mandates GRE. Okay, okay. So that's okay. just what you have to do. But well, assuming, okay. and that doesn't mean you are not going to get uh, admitted. Okay. But we just have to do more search because you stumble on some schools that will say, you know, GR is important. Then you have to okay. do that. Uh, okay. So, okay. but if you have everything, it makes your search easier, makes your life easier. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, so decide. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. No thank problem. you so much. No problem. So, I'm just going. Um, thank you. Oh my God, we are almost out of time. Oh. Your time, right? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know this name, Opoe 1K. If you are there, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, and I think I think it's good practice now. If you are joining Zoom meetings like this, you should use your uh, at least some some name that we can recognize. All right. I don't think he's doing that. He should. All right, I'm going to, let, let's give Mr. Tunde Yusuf another chance, because I think. Thank you so much. I have... Can't hear you. PhD in, in Illinois State University. Alongside. And your, your mic, your mic has. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. So, so you can hear me? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but the background noise is just... Okay. I said I applied for educational administration PhD at Illinois State University. Okay. And alongside, I also applied for graduate assistantship. Okay. And at the beginning of this month, I was given an acceptance for my graduate assistantship. So an acceptance which I was made, hello sir? Yes, I can hear you. And, and they said that I should, you know, accept that over which I've done. But presently, as I'm talking to you, the decision has not been made on the admission. And according to the information available to me, they said the program is going to start for the fall semester uh, at the August 22 of this particular month. So that's what is tomorrow. Hello? I can hear you. Please. So in that such a case, my graduate assistantship has been approved, but the decision has yet to be made on the admission. And I've made several attempts to contact the program coordinator of my department, but everything was to no avail. So, and it was like, you know, I'm in dilemma. I don't even know what to do again so that is just you know what i want to you know i ask from you maybe you have the expertise by which i can also embark upon in order to uh get solution to the problem on grant that's because me. i see that it's problem. i mean that's that's a little bit new because usually if you are not admitted you won't be considered for, for funding right? um, so i guess that I guess that you need to talk something. Uh, I don't know. For which, which assistant should you give? Is it a graduate? Uh, uh, 
Hello. So it is a graduate assistantship, pre-professional graduate assistantship. Do you know who administers this assistant? Is it the department or the graduate college or, or I mean, so I think it is from the human resources department of that particular university. That particular it is a human resources of that human resources department of that university. Oh, okay. So I didn't really have much to do with um, the decision for admission. Okay, I understand that. So yeah, so the human resources thought you, yeah, you have the experience for graduate assistantship, but the departments probably did not, maybe they've not admitted you, they've not decided if they're gonna admit you or not. But if, if they yeah. are if they have not turned right now, it's probably because they have not admitted. But it's a bad thing. All right. So I think it's just a, a, a that's really bad that they not. I don't I don't know what to how to explain that. On their behalf, but um, yeah. So you have to you have to ask the department, but I guess they've not admitted you. And if you are not admitted, you can't make use of your of your graduate assistant. Direct your questions to um, the graduate uh, um, coordinator of your department. The department, yeah. Be in the best position to uh, so. Because they are the, they are the ones that will admit you, not. Yeah, really, the graduate I, college actually just issues letters. Yeah. If the department does not vote to admit you, then no, there is nothing anyone else can do. Yeah. All right, my YouTube people are they are about to revolt. So let me go back to YouTube and, and um, <clears throat> go for some of the questions here before we continue. Um, so me, I'll be out. We have left, please. Huh? How many minutes do we have left, please? Um, I want to end this by in the next 20 minutes. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just I'm gonna skip mm -hmm. over okay. some okay. questions okay. that we stop your um your questions in the chat box. We'll reply to them. Right, so that's only by back today. You can drop your questions in the chat box. I'm trying to go through the YouTube comments. Okay, so we already answered some of these questions. Did you mail supervisors before applying to the schools? We already mm -hmm. answered that. Um, are there scholarships available for an applicant? Doctor, yes, I was asking about um, how to go about the and JRE registration. How to go about registration? Yes. They can check um, ETS.org, right? Yes, ETS. It's not dot com, it's dot org. Uh -huh. ETS.org. Let me just type it for you. Yes, dot org. Dot org slash slash you will yeah. use the exam from this teachers dot org you can get everything you need but well, again this is not the first thing you should do you should try to search for schools and look at the requirements yeah, look at what they need and um, of course most of them will need some of these exams then you can yeah. go ahead and uh, so um as we is on strike West insisted that my undergraduate university sends my transcripts electronically, but because of the strike, my undergraduate university can only send via email. Please advise me. Ah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the kind of advice I can give for this. Um, do you have any advice? 
you know, the site is unfortunate, but um, so if West is not going to accept electronic um, transcripts, then there is, there is little we can do here to help. Like so we pray that the ASU strike ends soon. Okay. So I, I'm sorry I'm not able to offer any less time. Yes, hmm? uh, Mr. So what are the names of the 17 schools? <laughs> That's a big one. So I'm gonna drop drop a YouTube. <clears throat> One of my uh, my YouTube videos here, and I think yeah, YouTube is right. And I think I mentioned some of most of the schools. I'm not sure if I mentioned everything, but most of the schools. So please check the comment section on, on YouTube. And I already dropped that same video in the Zoom chat. Okay, so if you are looking for schools that accept HIVs, now one thing I should say is even if you don't have to apply only to this school. Click on the you group can, for the video. You can look at okay. any other schools, but please ask them. You can email the graduate coordinator or the graduate college, you know, just to inquire if they accept HMDs or I mean, it's always a good thing. They'll probably not give you a great answer, but at least ask them before you. So I've dropped the video again here. I think someone saying I should drop. All right. So the names of the seven new schools are doing that. And even more. I think I have more names. That means I think there's a video of it here. Check later. How do you select the schools to apply to? Ah. How do you select the schools you apply to? Mia, do you want to answer that? Basically, the schools that have my research interest, those are the schools that I have applied to. So, hey, can't hear you. Get yeah? closer to your mic. <laughs> Please get, get closer to your mic. I'm struggling to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I basically apply to schools with my research interest. So, there's one thing to search for schools that have <laughs> chemistry, and there's another thing to search for schools. The department that have professors working on my research interest. So I apply to schools that have professors working on my research interest. Good. So, so we typically do this based on our research interest. So if you know what you are interested in, I mean, it doesn't have to be spot on uh, at, this, at this point of your life. But at least have an idea that, you know, I'm, especially if you are going for a PhD, uh, not always okay to say going for chemistry. Of course, there are different aspects of chemistry and there are different things that professors are interested in. So if you just apply to any chemistry program, they might you might not really find whatever they are doing very interesting. Um, and you don't want to spend four or five years of your life doing stuff that you don't enjoy as a PhD student. So, that's why I always advise that if you know what you're interested in, then you can search schools through this method. And if you check the video that are resources, the video that I've shared, I also explain other resources that you can use to search for, for schools. Okay. Um, so let me go back to, to that YouTube. I want to finish all the comments here. How long did it take you from the time you started applying to you, you got an offer? Well, if I get that question correctly, I applied when the application window was open, and that was between September to um, November. I submitted my last application in November, and I got the first of all, um, First of all, in December 23rd, on December 23rd. So basically, I think between, let's say three to four months, it's about. So three to four months. Yeah, and the thing is applying early really helps because I applied to FSU early enough. 
a friend of mine that had GRE, that had everything, she, gets, she didn't get into her first year. So, and I've always heard that applying early to schools really helped too. So it's not that I should not go and submit uncompleted application materials. No, that's not what I mean. We have to be prepared. So immediately the application window open, take your time, evaluate your application materials again, then apply. So yeah, I usually advise that by December 1st, all your documents and everything should be ready. So you should typically ad apply by December because uh, sometime before they go for the Christmas break, they will, they will meet and um, you know, if they already have some applications, they will you know, discuss them and admit these students. And, you know, they will start assigning funding by then. Uh, it's not, this is not true in all cases, but in some cases, but you wouldn't know what's going on internally. So that's why I just advise that you try to apply early uh, because you might benefit from that early vote. <laughs> so, um, I as a HND graduate, how do we write project proposal? I think we already talked about that. We didn't have to write any proposal. Um, where are things for all applications from? Or somewhere? Uh, is IELTS compulsory for all Nigerians? No, it's not compulsory. It depends on the school. So please um, look at the requirements for that particular school. And um, of course, you can get away with of some of this exam, but make sure that it doesn't affect your, it doesn't ultimately affect your chances for funding, okay? Because in some cases, I should tell you this now, in some cases, some of these departments use the English exam as a criteria for uh, assigning teaching assistance, okay? So make sure it doesn't affect that. They might waive it for admission, but when it comes to funding, make sure that it doesn't affect. And the only way you can know is to ask people that are probably in that school, okay? To show that it doesn't affect. So it's not just about waiving exams. It's advantage when it comes to funding. Um, please, how do we, in the YouTube, Ask um, live questions. Please drop your question in the chat. Um, she didn't write any GRE exam for those who were asking. Is waste evaluation only applicable to the US schools alone? Well, I don't know about any other country. What I do here is focus solely on US schools. But a lot of people use, um, I've seen people who are successful applying to the UK, even Commonwealth. One of the people in our group last week helped uh, scholarship, but he, he had to decline for the US. Um, add me to the Zoom meeting. I think you are in the Zoom meeting, Mr. Adga. Yeah, definitely. Most of you are. Um, please, how did you transfer your transcript from Fed Polaro to West? I think I've answered that. I I applied to Federal Technic Laro to send my West. Uh, so sorry to send my transcript to West. So when you apply during my time, I don't know if things have changed because I am aware COVID would have affected a lot of things. But when I, I applied to West, then when West needed my transcript to be sent, official transcript to be sent by my schools. I was um, I was informed I was informed by my um, porter. So you keep checking your porter to see any notifications. The minute I got notified that I need to send my transcript through my school, I applied to FBI. I told FBI to I pay. I pay them to send my transcript to school to West rather. And after West received the transcript. My portal was updated as well that they have received my 
the transcripts from so 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 school and Mahendi school as well. Um, the the notification. I think after seven or two weeks, seven days or, or fourteen days, I got notified again that my West evaluation was completed and. They have sent another email to school for verification of the results they sent. So, of the transcript they sent. So, the school verified again. And that was the um, end of the evaluation process. The next notification I got was that my evaluation results report was ready. And I told them to email it to an address in the U.S. where I got my transcript. So you can tell them to email to Nigeria anywhere you want. All right. So, um, so I would like to know, this is from Cynthia Pemo. I would like to know if you specifically wrote in your essay to the school that you wanted a fully funded scholarship or you just got it because of your grades. No, on the website, you would find every financial aid there. So if a school doesn't give, funding, basically most of them would write it on their website if they have funding for you. So I only apply to schools that have funding and most chemistry um, PhD are funded. And when I got the admission offer, the admission offer automatically came with funding. So I needed not to apply separately for funding while I was applying for admission. So if you are qualified for admission in some schools, they will automatically consider it for funding. Yes. So when you concern yourself with this, how you can be a top candidate for admission, and every other thing will come up to that. Um, any school that says GRE is optional, should we apply there or not? <laughs> they say it's optional. And you have the GRE, please submit it to. <laughs> if it is if it is optional now and you have it, please retrieve. I won't advise you to apply to this school because it's affected me. Uh -huh. So if they say it's optional, um and you submit your application there without the GRE, first believe that a lot of other candidates will submit the GRE exactly. and they will consider those people before you so. Exactly. If you just have some outstanding record of publications or something. But yes. outside of that, I, I usually say it's a trap. They say it's Exactly. Just imagine I got a professor at Michigan State University, and I think that was the third um, code email I even sent out. I got a professor, we were on good terms, and I didn't get admission because of GRE. And it was really written boldly on their website that um, GRE was not required. That means it was optional. Right. So I said get in. So if it's optional, it's a trap. If you if you no, don't no, have no, the no, 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 GRE. Don't have the GRE. You can still submit your application if you get a an application fee waiver. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least you, you are not spending anything. But if they say it's not required, totally not required, maybe. These are the places you want to look at. You don't have to do that. For optional, mm, it's trap. All right. So, um, can I get a scholarship while still doing my PSC and how? That's risky. I would say you should finish and have your transcript before I admit mean, that you're able to issue your complete transcript before you have to. That's my advice on that. Um, because there are a lot of other people that would have complete transcripts. So why should they compare you? So that's... Uh, I do not have a publication and I wish to have PhD full funding. What is my chance of getting it with a five book out of four? Hmm... Um, so it depends on the field anyway. Uh, there are some fields that are, you know, the best, for example, in biomedical science, field, um, they will appreciate if you are already have a patient at least one. So it might be a little difficult. So it depends on the field and the type of schools you are applying to. Okay. 
So it's just a mix of things that I can't really say, unless I see the kind of school you are planning to uh, know your field. I can't really say for certain what your chances will be. So, So I have an upper credit in microbiology, HMD. Is it possible to get a fully funded scholarship? And um, probably schools that accept microbiology, MSc. Please check the video that I shared in the comments and um, you will have the sense of, of what to do. Yes, for those schools that say um, GRE is waived, is waived, they won't use it in your application. And during the application review, they won't use it. As far as, as long as they say it is waived. Sorry, what, what are you suggesting? No, I saw a. Sorry, <laughs> Panoy. I didn't know I said it out. Someone was asking in the chat box uh, about if the school says. Um, GRE is waived, should they still move forward to? So, and as I've said earlier, optional is a trap, but when they say it is waived, we are waiving it. We won't use it. Yeah, we won't use it at all. Yeah, if it's waived, it's, uh, it's waived. So, they don't like But don't go for optional unless you have the score. Yes. Or if they are waiving application fee, but they just apply and see what will happen. Um, so, so where's ICAP stroke? Where's basic? Which one will you advise? Where's ICAP? Where's um, basic? Well, that was what I was mentioning the other time that I did West basic because it was cheaper and. If you want um, West ICAP, it means you want West to have the transcript state somewhere, your evaluation state somewhere. So that when you perhaps you have a school, you're admitted into a school that needs you to send your West evaluation in the future, you just write West, send my results to a report to so 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 school, and they will send it to you at no, they will send it to them at no cost. But if you're housing for basic, you have to pay by then. That's be, I think, fifteen dollars or twenty-five dollars later if you want West to send it to school. So I opted for ICAP. Uh, sorry, basic because I I was hoping that no school would tell me to send West official report, and no school has told me to send West official report. So it depends. Depends. Basic and ICAP is a lot of money. So I I think you should just I mean. For me, I would just go with basic, right? Um, at least you'll be able to use the initial results for for your admission process. Then even later, if a school needs the official it's about fifteen dollars to send it. So that shouldn't be a problem. At least it will be a school that you know you are going to, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. So they would have already admitted you or something for the admission. So just go with the option, and you might be lucky that they never ask. So where's basic? It's the way to go. Is it the cumulative GPA or the GPA of the last four semesters that determines the grade used to get into grad school? Good question. So it depends on the school or on the department. So some departments really put a lot of weight on the, on the last uh, four semesters, so that, that's the last two years, because they believe these are the senior years that you put in there, your third and fourth year, where you will take more difficult classes. And because of that, if you do well in those classes, then you are likely to do well in that school classes as well. So some schools put some weight on that. But unfortunately, you might not really know what we, most of the time, we don't know what a school would do, what a particular program uses, right? Only those that have knowledge of the internal workings of that environment will know that. So 
I can't really give you a, an idea. It depends on the school. Some, some just use the whole transcript, while some put more importance on the last four semesters. So, um, yeah, so it depends. Um, so where's basic can just be used ones like this question said. So if you want to use it multiple times, where's I can? Haha, what was Islamiyat Stofu spot? I think that was, I, I had. It's okay if you don't want to show. Thank you, I want to. <laughs> I think <laughs> first I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. Don't worry, I can I can I share. I, I have I have I 99 when I did my I don't want to share. I had 99 when I did my 99 by what? 120. Uh it's right now. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't have any. Do you think it's easy? Postdoc at Stanford. Ah, hey, hey. Oh, look at you. <laughs> doctor, please. Uh, uh, doctor, please listen. Let me ask this question. When you are writing your SOP, like maximum of how many pages, please? Um, good question. <laughs> Excuse good question. me. Sorry, Dad. Um, uh, all right. Good question. I, I would say if you are using single. What is this called? Single spacing, not more than two pages. Shouldn't be more than two pages. Two pages, um, okay. Yeah, even regardless of the spacing, if yes. you are using double spacing, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be more than two. Okay. Yeah, but what, I mean, what do you want to write for two pages? The less you write, the better. Just keep it to two pages. Yes, sir. So the less you write, the better. And hit all the important points. As okay. I recommended in that in my video. So he told me that point. And so, the what of this is it is it the same thing applicable to CV? No, your CV can be as I mean, doesn't matter. You can you can have, but I would imagine that this, except you have tremendous experience, I would I wouldn't yeah. think you have a long mm -hmm. CV. You see, I I practice as a uh, biomedical engineer, I understand, within the military uh, hospital. Okay. So when you look at the Nigeria system now today, we have only about uh, five schools that did the course at the engine level. So we don't have, it's only, it's only most of them you see that at the monotechnic do the ND, ND, ND. So for a few of us that have determination, we have to go ahead and go and how, how to find the way how to do it. <laughs> Uh, electrical engineering because what we do now at this level in Nigeria concerned by medical engineering is only based on repair and troubleshooting and when you have the more knowledge on, on electronics engineering do your work becoming more easier for you yeah 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 um also, good for Sarah and other website I have more than 50 online class that I've already obtained Okay. Are you hearing me? I think I lost you at one point. Oh. Okay, are you hearing me now? Yes. Okay, so due to this one, so due to this, most of the school, they don't have the B engine. So um, for most of us that we are practicing to keep updates, we have to divert back to electrical engineering to have at least maybe like HND in electrical engineering. So now during this procedure, now there's a lot of the course that involved that I have to do online through the Coursera. I've done most of the course, more than 50 online course. So when I look at the CV, I'm seeing it that it's too long. So I have to minimize it to about three page in case maybe, maybe during the application, if I want to upload the CV, it will not be too much. So I'm just trying to seek for the advice. Is it, is it necessary to minimize it or we should leave it the way it's plain like that? So if um, if there are some that are not very specific to the role you are hoping for in grad school, I would remove all those ones. Okay. Just limit it to the ones that are like very, very important to that role. Okay. So, but I I mean, as a PhD applicant or something, I wouldn't think you should have more than four page CV or five at most. Of CV. 
except if you have, um, yeah, except if you have tremendous experience. So we, we would have to round up soon, but we have about three people who are still, still raised their hands here. So I still want to give them a chance. Let me lower my hand. So thank you for that question. Okay, you're um, welcome, sir. Um, what's this? Uh, Bill Gates, uh, what's, I don't know what the full meaning of that is. Maria Abdul Rahman. I can't see your full name. But you raise your hands, please. Um, can you ask a question? Yeah, so Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you for um, giving me an opportunity. And once again, I want to say congratulations to um, Mrs. Sistaniyas. So my question is, though I've actually pushed it initially to her, but she hasn't answered that chat. So my question is, um, I actually graduated with 2.97 building technology for my HND program. But I did. I still have an um, intent of going for maybe the masters or PhD level to study more. Can you hear me, sir? Go ahead. Yes. Uh -huh. So to study more. But she made mention of something that, um, based on your research, uh, your research of interest, maybe what you want to carry your research to, you probably get um, a supervisor or a professor that would be interested in your. In that, uh, in that line. So I want to ask, do I have a, an interest in um, build, uh, green building material used in construction? Green building material used in construction. So based on that, and with my um, lower, that is 2.97 that I had for my HN program, can I have an opportunity of um, going for the master's of PhD level? Zoom meeting. That's my question, sir. Did you get that? Did you get that, yeah. that sir? Um, Sorry, I can't yeah, I don't get it. Let me yeah, can you, you get it? Please summarize the question again. Okay. I said, with, let me just say with um, HND lower in building technology, can someone um, get it? Funded um, admission for MSc or PhD. That... All right, you have you have an issue in tech, right? I think that was what you're saying. And can you get? No, are you still there? Yeah. Work. Yeah, if, if anybody has a question, I'm coming. I'm in a meeting. I'm in a meeting. In a, in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> but I couldn't get the whole picture. I didn't get that question. Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully, he will ask that again. Uh, I, Ismail Karim. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Huh? Why do you get um, it? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Hello, can I hear you? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Baba, Baba, uh, uh, and congratulations once again, Mrs. Islamia. I just want to ask, and I really appreciate everybody, and it has been a long time lecture. Please, precisely because of some subsequent time, if you can give us a contact in case you want it after the individual research. Sometimes maybe we want to have a link or just ask a question during this process of some of the things that I've talked in the class. So someone can just quickly like WhatsApp or something like this so that to be a quick referral or response in application implementation of all these things that are said so that individually the participant can, including myself, we can go and do this once while we are in the session. So, we can make make a in case of questions. We can quickly get assistance from you. 
I need a contact. Or if there is any other time, a lecture like this will come up so that we can join. Thank you very much. That is just my question. All right, good. So because you're in this meeting, you can always um, email. I'm hoping we can do this once every month. At least till you all submit your application in February or March, I think. Hopefully. But I know Mia will be busy, but hopefully I can drag another person here. Because there are a lot of brilliant people around that uh, we can meet. So, um, yeah. I will get in touch, but uh, you can always send me, send me an email, bestmanacademy at gmail.com. The email you received is the link to this room in some way. Right, so bestmanacademy at gmail.com. If you have any questions that hopefully maybe we haven't answered in any of our videos or something, or even if we have answered it, I will refer you to the video. Um, yeah, so definitely you can shoot me an email there. And also you can um, send messages through our social media platforms. Instagram is always um, better, uh, but yeah, you can also use Twitter, but I'm not always on Twitter. But I know uh, even if I'm on Instagram. The best bet, because I could remember during my time, so I was messaging you by Instagram before we moved to um, yeah, India. My my wife always checks the Instagram page. So if there's anything she cannot answer, she will always let me know. Um, so Bestman Academy as well on, on Instagram. So that, that's, that would be my advice. You can always reach out. But um, I would recommend you get to our, so I'm going to put another link in the, so the NIW, the best man, academy.com there is a free course there that has everything including if you want to prepare for GRE or TOEFL we have PDFs of all these things and even I think I have a software for TOEFL um, there if you want to practice do practice questions so it's something I bought that I shouldn't share but I'm sharing anyways it's dropping yet Doctor have you dropped the link yes I dropped it no, we can we can find it there. Oh, okay. I have a sent to someone. I think I just sent it to someone. So everyone, I'm gonna send it again to everyone. I'm gonna do that first. Um, and um, even when you get admitted and um, funded, hopefully, and you need to go for an interview. We have um, a small training on visa interview. Everyone that I knew uh, who went through that process got their visas. So it's everything is free. And um, <clears throat> hopefully when you get to the US, you can start working towards your permanent residency. Um, you don't have to wait for anybody to do it for you. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what we do. So I hope everyone can see the link now. If you go to that, website, you will see, I think the title of the course is Beating Competition for, for Grad School Funding or so. I can't remember. I'm going to put that same link on YouTube. So niw.bestmanacademy.com. So of course, if you want to reach out, please reach out if I leave their Instagram or send an email to bestmanacademy.com at gmail.com rather, bestmanacademy.com. All right. So please make sure there are specific questions uh, related to grad school. So that, that's um, really uh, all we have time for today. Uh, Mr. Tunde has been very consistent, but um, we can't hear anything from his, his mic. So I don't know what to do. I feel bad that I'm gonna let you. Let's give you one more chance anyway. Can you? Can you uh, hello, sir. All right. So it is because the network is not efficient here. Um, thank you so much for your presentation, sir. 
what I'm trying to say in essence is that I applied for educational administration PhD at Illinois State University. Then at the end of the day, I was made to apply for graduate assistantship. Then in the long run, I was, you know, the interview was set up for me for the graduate assistantship, to which I later did. And then at the beginning of this particular month, I was given an offer for the graduate assistantship and I was made to accept it, which I've done. Yeah. And ever since, the decision has yet to be made on my admission. And with the information available to me, they said the program is commencing on, on the 22 of August of this month. And right. uh, currently, as I'm talking to you, any decision has not been made on the admission. Have you, did you contact your graduate coordinator or something? Yes, I did that, but I've not received any information as regards to that from him. Yes, sir. Uh, it's strange to me how you were assistant approved for Um if you if you can email another maybe a senior professor of the group or the head of the department, you know, just someone. Well, I, I think getting a little bit too late for this semester, but if they can figure out something, maybe you can they can defy it in January, you know. But well, those are the people that can help you. Not, not me. I don't have any advice there. Apart from contacting uh, people in the department or the graduate college. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you so much. So please, for the recommenders, apart from our lecturers that taught us in the school, can we use other personalities as our recommenders and the referees? What do you think? Yeah. How many people? Do you well, many I feel when if you want someone outside your okay, you should. I feel you should use two people, two lecturers, then one person outside your school. Because as for me, even though all my recommendations of them acted as my oh, other recommenders. Why one acted as my employer, even though they, they still work in the same um, the same institution? So that is our recommend that you use at least one lecturer from your undergrad or your school, not just two people outside your school, because those are the people that can assess, attest to your research abilities, your academic, your ability to survive in academic environment. Yeah, you absolutely need at least one person. The best is to have two who can speak to your academic um, <clears throat> abilities. So, um, so even, even if you are going to use anyone from up, uh, outside your institution, it should, be, it should not be more than one. Now, um, yeah, that, that's the general um, recommendation. <clears throat> So, hello, um, doctor. Hello. Yeah, I once called you, but you didn't answer. All right, do you have a quick one? Yes, sir. All right. So, my question is um, I said, with a GPA of 2.97 in building technology for my HND program, and with a, a research interest, because you made mention of um, research, uh, research interest of um, green building material used in construction. Can I like search for a professor or a doctor that has a line of um, research interest with mine? Is it possible for me to get a fully funded um, PhD or MSc program? That's just the question. So you said your research interest is green building? Material used in construction. Yeah, you can, you can always do that for people that are publishing in that environment. And um, you, you might realize that um, maybe this kind of people are in the civil engineering department, you know, it might not be called building technology anymore. Um, so yeah, you can always do a search using those terms, either on Google Scholar or, and I think some of, some of that might be in the 
the NSF database that we want to talk about, the one about <coughs> Never, Sorry, nevertheless, going by the um, CGP of a lower credit. Oh, so this is not 3.97 out of five. No, no, 2.97, 2.97. Out, out of four. Out of four? Out of four, four, yes. 2.97 out of four. And that is lower credit. Yes, sir. Well, the thing is when you do your waste evaluation, maybe, maybe this will bump, maybe they will be able to bump you up to 3.0. I don't know, there are some cases where people are where waste evaluation results in, or is this a waste evaluated result? No, 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 the HND uh -huh. result. All right, there are some cases where, you know, after waste evaluation, your result, your DPA might be about a few points higher, you know? So I, I would still try to do this. So if, let's say your waste evaluation results into maybe 3.1 out of four, might be okay, okay, because most schools, uh, I think the requirement is 3.0 out of uh, four. So it's, it will be challenging if it's less than 3.0 out of four, but again, it's not impossible, especially if you don't run from those exams, okay? okay. So probably someone should just go for the worst evaluation first. Yeah, and see and see where you stand, and and um, if it's less than three point zero, then there are some schools that will, that might still say two point eight out of four, you know. So then you have to just stick to those schools, okay. uh, or stick more to those schools. I'm not saying you should not apply to schools that would need higher GPA, but especially if you get some more, but you would want to mix it up with schools that actually within the range of your GPA, okay? okay. But okay. I know most schools do 3.0 up for four. Okay. So um, maybe this one to Mrs. Sami at all, also doctor. Um, going by the West evaluation, there's maybe some courses on Coursera, maybe project management course and HSC course, can they add to the evaluation? I don't know if you get that. I said for the evaluation on West, Okay. There's maybe a um, courses on Coursera that is like a project management course, an HSC course. Can they add to that value on, on the West evaluation? Or it just has to do with the transcripts only? Okay. Sorry, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Islamia. Oh, you can't hear me? Now we can hear you. So sorry about that. Um, you don't need, you're not using any um, certifications for your West evaluation. You're only using your transcripts, your educational transcripts for your West evaluation. So others can just be, you can include that in your CV if they are related or they are relevant to the program you are applying for, or your, the job you are applying for. So you don't need all those ones. All right. Thank you very much. So we, I'm just gonna round up with a couple of questions here. Um, so is WES the only recommended evaluation body? Um, I, of course there are other bodies, but um, I'm only familiar with the WES. And most of the people that- WES uh, is widely accepted. Yeah, because when the West is widely respected and accepted, so you don't want to send something to a school and they will still be asking you to, to explain what this means. Well, I guess there are, there are other ones. But like I said, West is the only one that we need. The um, Canadian government has said this At least for US schools, right? West. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah. So someone Hello. I'm Hello. also a chemistry graduate HND to be precise. And so far I'm not going to jobs. And so far I've not gotten any chemistry related jobs since I graduated in 2018. 
Do I have any hands applying for Hello? So what do you think, Mia? If you have no experience as a graduate from the four years, someone has graduated for like four years and they have no experience in the field, in chemistry. Okay. Specifically. And they're still gonna be confused. Hmm? I can't hear you, doctor. Oh, I said someone asked if uh, I mean I think they graduated in 2018 and they have no job in the field, chemistry. Uh, so they said, can I still be competitive for performance? Yes, you can. Just try to search for professors, search for schools, and write the GRE exam and TOEFL so you can apply to as many schools as possible. <laughs> All right. So I think someone is still surprised here. I just want a clarification about your admission. Is it an HND to PhD or HND to master's to PhD? HND to PhD. Are you going to skip an MS degree or are you going to do MS before PhD? Thank you. Uh, I'm not doing MS. I'm doing PhD, but I have the opportunity to, um, after passing my PhD candidacy exam in my third year, they can give me, if I want, I will be giving the master's certificate. So if you are admitted to a direct PhD program, um, you can just go ahead and get your PhD, but they will give you an option. If you, maybe just in case you can't finish your PhD and you just want to take your master's and leave, they will give you an option to, to do a small project and then just a small master's thesis after you've done all your four classes. And you can do all these master's projects at the time and get a successful of master's. But if you don't want that struggle and you just want to focus on PhD, you can go ahead with that. So, but the admission is for PhD. But some people choose to do that side project while still working on their PhD project as well. So we're almost done with the questions here. I think most of the questions we've already answered. Um, you don't have any direction or information on how to go about it. I already shared a link that you can look at me at the academy.com and then start. Mr. Dr. Babaji, I, I want to ask you a question. I, I have a question I want to ask you, sir. Who, who is talking? Now, this is a HMD Global G20, Nokia G20. Yeah, this is, I think that's why I didn't call because it's, that's not me. All right, I, go ahead. I have, been, I have been raising my hand for the past uh, two hours. It's difficult to call you by that name. <laughs> okay, next time, next time I will put my real name. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. And uh, Islamat, I really appreciate you for, for, for your services. Please, I, I really want to ask a question. I have, uh, I have OND, lower credit, electrical electronics engineering from the Institute of Management and Technology, Enugu State. Then I have my HND, upper credit, in the same department, electrical and electronics engineering. And then I graduated in 2010. And since I graduated, I, well, after my youth service, I got a job. Though during my one year IT, I did my IT in Lagos in a telecommunication company. Then during my youth service, I, I also I served with NAVDAC in their IT department in Lagos too. So what I want to ask now is, then after that, after my NYSC, I got a job in the oil and gas in the production department. We call it well test, well testing department. That is where I got a job. And I've been doing that job for over close to eight years now or eight years plus now in oil and gas, we're testing department, which is production engineering. So what I'm doing is totally outside what I studied in school. But then I have a passion for IT, for information technology. I really want to go into telecommunication or other ITs, cyber security on the, or the rest of them, because when I was in school, I wasn't good in those things. Only that I didn't get a job in those areas. I got a job in oil and gas. 
So I have two questions. Now, I want to go back now. What am I going to put in my CV? Because I don't have experience in electrical where I studied. Then secondly, I, I evaluated my WES for Canada. Can I use it for US? I did my evaluation for Canada. So, and again, the third one, for my CV, my CV is more than eight or nine pages. So how am I going to reduce it to the normal page? Thank you, sir. All right, so let, let me quickly address that. So you, you don't, if you have legitimate reasons to have long CVs, you don't have to reduce it, but you can only reduce it if there are things that are not really related to you know, the position we're applying to. And it's, it's I'm careful to say this, but it's not always a, a bad thing to have a different experience from your undergrad or from where you are, you are applying to, okay? I think your work okay. experience will still be important if you know how to sell it in your, your statement of work. I, mean, I like the way you okay. put it here. You know, you have passion for it, but you didn't get a job there, so you started doing this. But now you want to go back to, you know, what you yeah. you put that in school. And um, I mean, you can make that explanation in your SOP as well. And um, what you want to really do you know, for the next few years while you are still working. So, um, so I think uh, the, sec the second question was I answered. You don't need to really reduce it, except if you look at the CV and there uh, are things that are not really going to be useful in grad school or something, yeah. you can cut those ones up, at least for the purpose of admission. So the first question, which was, uh, I think I answered that too, right? Yeah, you answered. So you don't, it's not, it's not a negative. It's not always a negative to have a different experience. So you just have to recognize what, 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 uh, what do you, do you want to apply to? So let's say you want to do, I don't know, data analysis or something. Are there skills or experiences you have gathered that um, during your work uh, period, this, yeah, in um, my and that will be useful. Then you sell that. Okay, in my in where I am now, I was in operation before, but like for four years now, I have been a data specialist in my company for more than four years now. So, so you just have to look at the experience that will be useful for the position you are looking for in grad school and sell that. So as long as your your undergrad GPA is good enough to at least uh, meet the requirements. I don't think you, you will have any problem because you've been working for so long. It doesn't yeah. matter. They even like people with, you know, some, in some departments, they like people with that, uh, with some work experience. Just, okay. Just for maturity. So, yeah, yeah, my HND is upper credit. Uh -huh, so. So. Uh -huh. If you can use West Evaluation for that, I don't know if it's the same. Do you know if it's the same, right, uh, Mia? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, that's what I'm asking now because someone told me you can't use the one for Canada. Canada and America, they're not the same thing. Mia, we can't hear you. No, someone told me that I can't use it. Uh -huh. So that's why I asked the question that Canada and America, they're not the same. Right, so. Mia, I think you are me. I don't know why we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I said you can use it. You can uh -huh. use the Canadian evaluation for US evaluation. All right. Um, so thank you everyone for thank attending. Um, thank you everyone for attending. Oh my God, we, we have one last one. Sorry, Mia, let's take this last one. All right, Mr. Okoye, let's have you for the last question. I want everybody to leave satisfied. Hello, sir. Good All evening, right. sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Please, uh, I want to appreciate you for this uh, great opportunity and this information being shared here. I'm really grateful to be part of uh, this evening uh, webinar. Um, my question is just, um, I don't know, I have, um, 
I studied geology, University of Nigeria and Soka. I'm uh, calling today, I'm uh, doing my research. So I'm just uh, trying to put things in place for myself. But uh, in MSC, I, I, I don't want to further with geology, but uh, I would like to go into data science, uh, data analysis. Don't know how this will be possible and uh, if uh, it's going to work out for US school or Canadian school and so on. All right, um, Mia, did you have, hear that question? Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Huh, you can't hear me. Now I can hear you. It's better. I didn't really get this question, but I do want to. All right, please, can you repeat the question? Okay, I said that uh, I studied geology. Okay. So I want to like transit from uh, geology to data analysis. Okay, that was fine. Uh, yeah, data science in quotes. So I don't know if it's going to be possible because um, in this field, although I've been doing online courses on data analysis <clears throat> um, and so on, so to just uh, try to bridge the gap. Yeah, so it's good that you are doing some online courses. Um, I would say it's not impossible to get admitted. The challenge will be getting funded. I think I said earlier that you know, data science, data analytics, um, they are kind of a, like a big field. A lot of people want to get into it because it's easier to get, it's kind of easy to get jobs in that field when you're only graduates, <clears throat> even with the master's. Sorry, man. <laughs> so it's easier to get a job with the, even with the masters, um, even as an international student. A lot of these big companies they need data to do this. So a lot of people are getting into that field. So funding is very limited. But if you have other means of funding yourself, then uh, this this might be a good thing to go into. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's data science, science field. They need people from different backgrounds because that, I mean, data is everywhere, right? In any, any field, you have data everywhere in any field. So if you can bring that geology experience, you can use that knowledge of data science to deal with geology people. So they still, they still need work in that field. But like I said, you have to search a lot, you have to work hard to at least want to get funded at the master's level. So it's not impossible. You just have to get on the foot and uh, start working through the process as described in the resource that I shared in the, in the chat. All right, so thank you very much. I want to especially uh, thank um, Tamia. I, I know you guys don't understand, probably will not understand what she's going through right now, transitioning into a new position. I know it's very hard. And I appreciate the fact that she can um, create things about three and a half hours now. <clears throat> On a Sunday morning, when you start thinking about, you know, how to maybe do some assignments or something for, for school tomorrow. So I appreciate your time. And I am sure they all appreciate it too. And hopefully when, maybe during your break, when we call you again, you will, you will um, come back to share some experience with us. All right. All right, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. And um, thank you, Doc. I appreciate everyone on YouTube as well. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. So uh, I uh, I copied you, all sir. the questions. I copied all the questions. I'm gonna go through them again. If there's anyone that we haven't addressed, I will try to address them and post it on the YouTube channel. So you guys. We we'll appreciate it if you follow our YouTube channel as well. Uh, that would be great for us. 
So, anyways, thank you for coming. And um, if you're going to do this next month, I usually, I typically do this every month to on Instagram during the uh, application period. Um, but yeah, we can always let you. You can follow me as well on Instagram. Would you like to follow me? Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram as well. All right. Thank you very much. And until uh, next time, hopefully we will we'll see you all in the U.S. next, next year. Hopefully. Okay, bye, guys. See you. To be all in. All right. Take care of yourself, doctor.